All right, guys, let's get this party started. Scott Schaefer dropped his epic Caleb Hammer video. Um, I'm going into it pretty skeptical, but I'm, of course, I'm always open to changing my mind. I reacted to the information that we had available. Um, this is not it. <laughs> and I put it in the description <laughs> under sources as well as this video if you want to watch this instead. And to be honest with you, I'm very skeptical about what's going on. I'll be more specific as time goes on. Can't say too much right now. You know how it is. The first couple of minutes of the video. Anyway, it's called Caleb Hammer might sue me for this video. We also might check out, there's in the description, there's a couple of interviews in here. They're relatively short, so we'll see. But let's start with this one. Apparently I'm in the video. So let's go. Might sue me for this video. Caleb Hammer might sue me for this video, and that isn't clickbait at all. He's already threatened legal action against me multiple times before I even released this video, simply for looking into a story he doesn't want covered and not immediately accepting his point of view. I thought he was threatening the guy Zeke, not this guy. Maybe I could be wrong about that. I remember it was the Zeke guy. Because if you look, this Zeke guy sent Caleb and like DM some like insane threats. He was very aggressive about wanting to come back on the show. Caleb was like, I can't really bring you back onto the show right now. It's been too soon. He wanted to be on like every week or two weeks or so. Um, cause Zeke really wanted to, to launch his career. And then he sent Caleb some incredibly disturbing messages, which again, towards the end of my life, my video that I made, um, that I was like, uh, yeah, I think it might be dangerous to platform the Zeke guy, but let's see what we got here. Some people are saying there might be more information in here. Now, to me, that seems very suspicious and almost like Caleb didn't want me to find something. And spoiler alert, yes, I found some very interesting pieces of information. Caleb's boy crush. Uh, I would like to personally stick my blank in a hole of his. Any hole will do. Uh, okay, gross. <laughs> we'll be discussing later in the video. All right. Now, a few weeks ago, I was presented with some information that Caleb Hammer, a finance... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know the context, so it's just like wild. Okay. YouTuber with 1 million subscribers had allegedly <laughs> acted inappropriately with a guest on his show. I reached out to Caleb by... Yeah, so my understanding was that Caleb would sometimes ask some of his guests if they wanted to collab on an OnlyFans with another person. Um, it's an interesting conversation to have, in my opinion, from what I saw, uh, Caleb would be like, oh, this is an opportunity here. If you want to do it, there's no pressure to do it. You can go as far as you want. You don't have to do it at all. And I don't really think it's a huge deal specifically because like if OF is a legitimate job, I don't see the issue in asking somebody if they can do OF, you know what I mean? We've decided as a society that it's legal and a way to make money. So as long as he doesn't pressure anybody, I don't really care if your argument is like, well, these people are in rough financial spots and. I mean, like, he's not saying you really should do that. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? If I was in a rough financial spot and you offered me a job at, pa like, Pathmark, they've all closed down, we wouldn't be saying the same thing. I just feel like as long as he keeps the opening of, like, hey, if hey, listen, you want to, you don't have to do it, but if you want, there's somebody that'll do stuff with you. I don't care. Like, I don't think that that's any kind of pressure. But we'll see as we move on by email to get his side of the story as these allegations were pretty severe and I had no interest in making a video without getting everyone's side of the story. Caleb initially was very friendly over email and denied all the claims against him. Okay. Hey, Scott. Sorry, I've, I've not seen your other messages, but somehow uh, someone else did ask me and I'll send the same message to you. I'm going to put this in there. Um... I've been dealing with a former guest, Zeke. He said for uh, he has said for almost a year now, or dealing with what he said for a year now. He was on my show three times and a pilot episode for a show called Date, a show called Dating Money. And after begging to be on for a fourth time uh, for months, I said he needed to make actual progress before coming on again. So what he means is like there needs to be an update that's actually worth talking about. He said it was his career too and eventually blew up. He started posting random allegations online in different places, many of which didn't catch my attention or knowledge at the time. Over the course of a month, the allegations kept changing until he got something that uh, was picked up by other people. The first time he came on my show, we talked about his OF. Oh, I didn't know he had an OF. He told me after the episode of recording that he wanted to build his Twitch and OF like many uh, other Austin creators. He asked for uh, any collabs and connections. That's why I tried to offer a collab there. I was un It was uncomfortable for me to talk about, and I left a voice note in my candid, over-the-top, typical communication style. This is how I always am on my show, to and in the vlog. So I'm confused why people think it's some gotcha that I felt awkward and danced around the subject. But his post is very out of context, so I don't get it. And you can see one of the screenshots. He continued to ask for help with his OF down the road. It looks like as of today, he deleted the majority of his video about me on YouTube and Instagram and uh, even his OF from his link stream. Not surprised if he's trying to clean up his messaging. He doxed me at two points, put my life in danger, threatened to kill me for not allowing to have him on the show. He also bragged about his claims for the drama in an out of the video. Yeah, so in the, my video, 
He said some wild. He said some wild threats. Thank you so much for another five gifted uh, members, Benjamin Max, brother. I really appreciate that, brother. This guy's funding the stream today. The stream is brought to you by Benjamin Max. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, he also bragged. Did I say this already? Um, he also bragged about it being for the drama and is now deleted video. Watch his three episodes with me. This is a gen. Uh, that's his genuine personality. He bragged about lying and many other things that are bad. Oh my god, lying's bad, guys. How anyone is taking him seriously at this point, I have no idea. But then again, or but again, I know it comes with the territory of the job, and this is some solid red meat for a channel who just hit one million subs. I'm assuming Caleb's talking about him his own. I was quite close with most every guest within the first thirty or forty episodes before I ever got any notability or too much attention. I legitimately wanted them to do well and tried to create connections with the limited connections I had here in Austin at the time. In hindsight, even if he requested uh, connecting a guest with another OnlyFans creator was certainly not the best idea. If I could go back, I would change that. Came from a genuine place, but I do understand how it could be misconstrued. I, again, I don't really care about the convert. Like, hey, you want to do an OF with this person? I don't care about that. As long as it's done respectfully... Um, and you're not forcing the person. If you leverage a power, if you're like, you really need to do this or that's a little different. But if he's just like, hey, you want to do this? I don't care. You know, that's from, I, I think about it from my perspective. Hey, Papa God, would you want to do an OF collab? Let's say, um, you know, Morgue Pie came up and she's like, hey, you want to do an OF collab? What we'll do is we'll have you wear a green screen belly shirt and then I can play Fortnite on your stomach like I do my ass. <laughs> I would just be like, oh, no, no, thanks. You know, or maybe I, I, I mean, I'd have to ask my wife. I'd have to ask my wife. I'd have to see if she would be okay with me shaking, shaking the green screen belly. You know, um, you know. Anyway, hope this all makes sense. We've addressed this on my Reddit months ago. And there, he links it to the Reddit. I hope you have a great day. Okay, cool. And even told me to have a great day. What a nice young man. Unfortunately, that attitude quickly changed. How old are you compared to him? When I didn't immediately accept what he had to say as fact, he told me he wasn't interested in doing a Zoom call because. Okay. I appreciate getting back to me, Caleb. So you should have put an exclamation point, Scott. Then he would have understood that you were saying that with quite a bit of uh, zealousness. <laughs> the two of you have very different versions of what's going on. I did a Zoom call with Zeke a few minutes ago, and he claims that he thinks there was no friend you were trying to connect him with for OnlyFans content, and this was just a ploy to allow you to hook up with him. <laughs> Okay. He also claimed that you inappropriately felt his leg after one of your appearances on the show and made him uncomfortable. Obviously, these are very serious allegations. No offense. These are not very serious allegations. If what he's and that it's definitely inappropriate, but it's like, hey, from what I'm hearing, Zeke said that he said that there was a guy that wanted to do OF as an excuse to try to fuck him, and then he touched his leg at one point. Um, that made him uncomfortable. That's not appropriate, but it's not like any serious allegation. It's like, hey, don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, we're not Kevin St. Basie right now, dude. If you don't know, you have to look it up. Still inappropriate, but I wouldn't call. I mean, not a, we can we can have a conversation about the 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 the, the uh, a spectrum of seriousness on it. I'd be like, hey, that's not that would be not right if that was true. I wouldn't call it Caleb a fucking serious predator for that though it's like hey caleb what the hell keep it in their pants man that's that's inappropriate brother say you're sorry and kind of move on but anyway um is what he's saying true uh if not have you pursued legal actions against him i've talked to zeke on zoom and would like to do the same with you to get a full story let me know if you have any free time today or tomorrow for a brief 10 minute video zoom call to clear up these issues i would have just said um lick my butt no i'm just kidding he doesn't have to Let's see what his uh, let's see what his his response is. I'm not interested because I don't think that you have to do that. I don't think that Caleb has to legitimize this claim by doing that. Um, but we'll see what his like response because his first written email I think was a reasonable response. You know what I mean? Not everybody needs to you know go onto a public stage and do this. This seems like a reasonable the first response. Let's see what his response here is. I'm not interested in a Zoom call <coughs> at this time as I am truly am not the biggest fan of the internet drama industry. I mean that is fair. That is fair. And even if this is a real issue, a lot of times these get these real issues get filtered through drama and it really muddies the conversation in the water, right? Think about all the ridiculous Minecraft allegations where George is not found, um, is no longer found on Mr. Beast's page because according to this girl, he tickled her and that is apparently equal to sexual assault. But then the real story that she admitted to, I believe she admitted to it, is that they were cuddling for like an hour and then he like... I don't know, like moved a little, like that's how, that's how it works. That's how like dating works. You're like, okay, let me see if she'll kiss me. And then, okay, she kissed me. Maybe I can feel her up or I can like kind of move my hand to her hip. And then 
you kind of go with the motions and consider the situation. You know what I mean? It's like we don't have proportionate conversations when it comes to online internet drama because the the jury of public op- uh, opinion is full of kids. It's the reality. You got a Minecraft YouTuber's audience with like fifteen year olds that they, they mean well, but they don't know fucking anything, and they don't understand how anything works. So I understand not wanting to filter this through internet drama. I get it. And I do not wish to participate in it. He has made a variety of allegations over the course of this past year or so. They have changed multiple times, and this seems to be one that he's landed on. As you do your research, you should come across content on his platform where he admitted to doing this for drama. I am not willing to feed into someone else's content that is going to put me in a negative light. I would have hoped Caleb would have saved those videos. (laughs) That would have been probably smart. Um, Not that he asked to. It's not the burden isn't on him, but, you know. Last time Caleb talked to a drama channel, they did some uh, cringe hidden camera shit and made the shitty lime green website. Oh, is that what that was? Okay. Someone's life and profession should not be considered content and be used to make money from false allegations. I agree with the false allegations part, but I love making money on drama. I like to think I'm a more normal drama guy, though, you know? I like to eat up the... uh, I like to eat from the drama pig pen, but I like to think that my drama digestive system is normal and pushes out healthy poos. I don't know you, to be completely honest, but I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you have a journalistic integrity and will watch all the content with him involved and you will realize that he is a serial liar. It's like Kellogg's. He can claim anything he wants and he has claimed things over the past year after I told him I would no longer allow him to be on this channel. My lawyer... My lawyers are in possession of all his videos and text messages that clearly show he is lying. We are prepared to take legal action of of necessity. Oh, I think he meant legal action if necessary. We knew that at this point, um, anything would be feeding into exactly what he wants. But in preparation for your video, we are ready for legal repercussions for defamatory statements with very clear evidence proving your case, our case. Okay. I mean, if this is all true, I mean, listen, Caleb might just be threatening this guy. Be like, don't put the video out or I'll sue you. Or he might legitimately be like, we have a lot of information. We don't want to legitimize what this guy is saying because he's doing it for attention. And we don't want to give him a platform to do, it on, uh, do this for attention. And there are a lot of you know, false allegations out there on the internet. So like, I'm going to pursue a legal route. I don't think that there's a problem with that, with him saying he wants to pursue a legal route. I think that that makes sense. Um, you know, Just because he makes videos on YouTube doesn't mean that he has to subscribe to YouTube culture. Now, he still might be in the wrong. We'll see more information as it goes on. But fundamentally, again, I've looked at a lot of the information. It seems like there's a big nothing burger. But again, there could be more. I'm open to it. But what I'm saying is that, you know, I would get I get it. I understand him not wanting to like make like legitimized stuff. I mean, it gets out of control. Like, I understand how that shit works. It's just not even like worth it. It's just not worth it. My glasses are dirty. Thank you so much, Perry Lawrence, for the $10. Drama piggy. Hugs and kisses. (laughs) Exactly. Um, If you look at the history of my relationship with them, you will realize that the allegations make no sense, even including all of our text messages conversations, which are we are prepared to release. You will see that this never comes up, not even once until he spammed my phone and behedged me to come back on my show. He eventually gave up after many no's from me and he blew up online. If I truly did something so awful and disgusting like he claims... Why would he have filmed two more videos with us and beg to come on dozens of times going forward? So the so the, like there's a legitimate answer to that. Like he could have been like, oh, I didn't care. Like I'm, I mean, he would. It could be like a I don't want to be this disproportionate, but like a Harvey Weinstein thing. Like yeah, he touched my leg, but this could have been my shot at being a fucking famous Twitch streamer. But talking to Caleb Hammer, I would have let him. I would have let him Caleb screwdriver my asshole. If it made me fresh on Twitch, you know what I mean? Maybe he's maybe he's thinking that. Give me your Caleb flathead. I don't know. Your mu- your your Phillips screwdriver. That's the star one, right? I don't have a dad, so. It makes absolutely no sense, and I truly hope you are as objective about this as possible. Everything uh, is there that very clearly shows that his allegations are false, and I believe you'll see that if you investigate... See that if you investigate it appropriately. Okay, beautiful stuff. We read all that. Because he wasn't interested in participating in the internet drama industry, no. which I found to be quite funny since, in my opinion, his channel is entirely based on drama around other people's finances. Um, I don't think it's like any type of ironic or any issue. I think that like Caleb's content, I've only watched the one with Boogie. And I watched, I think, one of the ones with Zeke. And from what I remember, it didn't come off as like super dramatized it was really more of like hey here's some advice and here like hey here's some advice 
on how to get your shit together, asking them questions. Some of the thumbnails are like a little clickbaity if you look at them, and I get that. But I don't think that he he's not really a, he's not really a drama channel. He's not drama adjacent. I don't I don't think that that's a realistic. I think that there's a difference between spicing it up with some thumbnails, um, versus I don't know if this actually works. Duplicator. I don't think there's a difference between spicing it up with thumbnails versus like kind of feeding into the drama, sensationalizing. I don't know. I think it's a little different, but okay. He then made his first of many legal threats, stating that in preparation for your video, we will be ready for legal repercussions for okay. defamatory statements with very clear evidence proving our case. Okay. Now keep in mind that this was after I had sent him only two emails and was just trying to get the details around the initial case of inappropriate behavior I was first aware of. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So like, listen, Scott could be like in the right and all that too, like, but but Caleb's, uh, Caleb's, it makes sense. You emailed him. He gave you a response about the situation from his perspective. Then you kept pushing. And by the way, I'm not blaming you for continuously pushing to get more information. I get it. That's like your job. That's fine. But you kept pushing, and he said, "Like, listen, I gave you my answer, and I like, I, we're ready for like a legal. Re we're ready to go from a legal perspective. We're not going to feed into Zeke's bullshit." I did, like I don't fault either of them for their responses, just to be clear. Threatening legal action so quickly in the initial fact gathering stage without any video being made yet. I don't think it's very quickly. I think that it's that's that's how you would go. Like how many what well, then we have the conversation of like, well, how many messages do you guys have to exchange before it's reasonable for him to uh talk about this from a legal capacity? It sounds like to him he's being very clear. And again, I'm not saying don't make your video, just being clear. I'm saying you so it makes it I don't think that it was too quick he gave you his initial answer then you pushed for more information which I get it nothing wrong with that then he said I will pursue legal action if there's any defamatory statements in there we have a lot of information I don't think that it really is like a negative thing what he did really set off my alarms that something odd was going on here why was Caleb so defensive about me looking into this case further if the initial person who came forward was so obviously I disagree I don't like the narrative that's being pushed right now with like he was too defensive there might be a level of guilt there I don't I disagree a liar why quickly jump to legal threats against someone who was trying to tell a story that would present all sides equally mm. Caleb claimed that his lawyer had gathered all videos and text that clearly show his first accuser Zeke is lying and made the statement that they had prepared to release these I asked I think it would have been good to give him that if you actually had that to give that to Scott that might have been something that would have been a positive and, and productive in the follow-up email if I could see any of the evidence they gathered including videos Zeke supposedly deleted um okay this is a follow-up email oh we got oh we gotta read more emails guys what are we readers Ooh. I've watched several of his videos on you and haven't seen anything to lead me to believe he is lying you said your lawyers have all the videos can you link me uh, the one of his videos that's on his channel or one that he has deleted that proves he's a liar if you can prove to me that he is lying then obviously I won't make a video about this Right now, it looks like two people who have different opinions on events that happened. You don't deny that you're, that the voice messages you left him is real, right? <laughs> Touching him inappropriately, you deny. Any proof you can provide me to prove that he's a liar, I would like to see, and I'll be looking into this video as well. So from what I remember, the conversation was just like, hey, are you open to doing like an OnlyFans with another guy? I don't think it's a big deal. I'm assuming Scott will show it um, at some point, so we could talk about it then. But I don't... And he's like, you don't have to. It's not a big deal. The guy, like you get paid depending on how far you go. I, I really like I like I said I don't really see an issue with it. Like OnlyFans is now a conversation that we're having. It's a legitimate business. You can not like it. That's perfectly fun. And you're an adult. You can say no. I don't want to do OnlyFans. Like it's not that big of a deal. If somebody's like, hey, listen, you don't have to do it. No pressure. But if you want, you can make somebody doing OnlyFans. Like how am I being like it? You can you can say no. You can say no to that. Okay. So I don't really care about that. <clears throat> but anyway, maybe there's other stuff. Anyway, reasonable to ask for the um, videos that prove that, is, that he's a liar or supposedly prove it for sure. You watch the video where he says he's doing it just for drama and you don't think he's lying. Um, you looked into his past posts and see that he changes allegations multiple times. You don't think he's lying. Of course, I deny touching him. The voice memo has context that I've given a hundred, a thousand. I thought, I'm assuming you've been a thousand times. It's your job to look into things, not mine. I'm going to, I'm not giving you anything else for your use of clicks. Enjoy your ad revenue, my dude. You want to go beyond embarrassing platforms? Uh, you, I gotta fucking read better. You're going to be beyond embarrassing platforming somebody who has literally bragged about lying all these allegations and tried to have me killed. This is gross. End of communication from you to you. Okay, from me to you next will be okay for my lawyers. Okay, so to be clear, uh, reasonable to ask for the messages. Caleb does get a little defensive here. I think it would have probably been good for Caleb to like see like here it's all the information I have. You could sift through this. Um, that probably would if you're you know that probably would have been good. Or just not respond to this, you know, something like that. But the last one is rather defensive. Um, 
<coughs> it comes off a little emotionally charged, sure. Did and even told Caleb directly that if he can prove to me Zeke is lying, I wouldn't make any video on this topic and would move on. Caleb responded upset for some reason that I asked her the evidence that two emails before he had said he was prepared to release. I don't understand why Caleb would get mad at me for asking to see the evidence he already stated he gathered and was prepared to release. To me, that seemed like a fairly basic request, and as I stated to Caleb before, sure. if the evidence was as strong as he suggested, I would have never made a video covering any of this. Following okay. all this, Caleb decided to publicly post to his community tab and Twitter a long post claiming I was just a drama YouTuber and questioning my integrity. Ooh, it based. <coughs> Sorry, I just like did a little dusting in my room, and now I'm like coughing like a dog. Yay, I finally got canceled. Uh, here comes the drama after a year of Zeke threatening to kill me, doxing me, and if I, the messages I saw were real. He threatened to kill him multiple times. It was insane. Doxing me and harassing me for not letting him come on my show. Someone is actually going to platform him. YouTube drama shows don't have the best reputation of journalistic integrity, but I hope Scott is better than uh, most, though I personally never consumed his content. I can't believe this guy tried to ruin my life um, multiple times because I wouldn't allow him on the show again. He never improved, only ever lied to me uh, on the show, is still trying to harm my life. I am glad that most people will be objective and see that he has bragged about it being for the drama in the past and that he's a compulsive liar. This is so gross, sad face. I hope our culture does better in the future than feed stuff like this. You, as the audience in my life, I've always promised to be transparent and I will always be F clout chasers. Oh, we read that already. I don't know why I read it. I read that in line of the last video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He then happily responded to one post on Twitter saying, I'm excited. I've never sued anyone before. This will be fun. Okay. Lawsuits are never fun, Caleb. It doesn't matter. I'm excited. Uh, blatantly lying about somebody so heinous is not a joke. Okay. I've never sued anyone before. This will be fun. <sighs> okay. Lawsuits are never fun, Caleb. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. You'll be devoting countless hours to fighting the case. And eventually the discovery process will take place where lawyers dig through every document they can get their hands on. And Okay. uncover every and any secret currently hidden. I've also spoken to lawyers about this case, and you clearly would be classified as a public figure. If you sued me for defamation, you would have to prove actual malice that I knew information... Sure, defamation is pretty tough to prove, so you probably wouldn't win the defamation lawsuit. ...information presented in the video was um, false. And, and then you'd probably have, you'd have to sue Zeke for defamation. I don't think that you could sue this guy for defamation as long as he doesn't make any like a super objective statements or unrealistic objective statements on stuff, you know? And posted it anyway. Seeing as how I've given you multiple attempts to talk to me about the issue discussed in the video, as well as do everything in my power to verify it's accurate, I think that would be a very hard case for you to win. In my opinion, any lawsuit you file would just be a sad attempt to try and get revenge for not portraying you in the positive light you want everyone to see you in. Your sudden legal threats for simply asking questions will also portray you in a negative light if you do end up... It's possible, and I mean, you could be right about that, all that, Mr. Scott. It's also possible that this whole thing is like distressing Caleb because Zeke is a fucking psychopath that threatened to kill him. <laughs> so there's... It's a possibility too, and he's just not acting, you know, perfectly. But I saw the messages that this Zeke, this Zeke supposedly sent him, and they're fucking insane. So suing me, and any lawsuit you file will simply be a waste of time. But that's just my opinion, and Caleb can do whatever he feels needs to be done going okay. forward. Now that we've got past all of Caleb's legal threats, let's get into the actual allegations against Caleb. First, we'll be talking about the original accuser of Caleb named Zeke, and then we'll talk about the further alleged text of Caleb I was given after. What many people don't know is that many of the early guests on Caleb Hammer's show were actually paid actors hired off of a website known as Backstage to appear on the show. Zeke was okay. one of the actors that claims to have found out about Caleb's show from the site, and from the listing Zeke showed me, the offer was quite generous with an initial- Is that a real thing? Oh, is that what this video was, was, that he hired them? Okay, it's like a Jerry Springer show. I guess that's, okay, that makes sense as to why Scott would say that this is drama if he hires these people and they're not actually um, legit. In la well, let's see the context of it. These, okay. Hey, Esteban, I would be, uh, love to discuss having an upcoming episode uh, of our feature show of our show feature you as stated in the description this is a reality tv education focused shoot it should not take more than a few hours uh we will provide 25 dollars an hour for the shoot and 25 percent commission on all revenue generated from the episode for 12 months we are anticipating this commission to range from 2500 to 8000 million on the video are you okay with being filmed in a reality show environment <clears throat> um Is, this is my real question. Is this... Is this for the financial audit or for the dating show? I graduated... Okay. Uh, this is from May 10th, 2022. I... Uh, I'm just trying to understand that. These are from a year ago, so they'd be from 2023. The furthest one is a year back. Is this so? Are we saying 
that this is for his financial audit vi uh, thing? Or is this for the reality TV show? I'm wondering. That's the only thing. Small $25 appearance fee and is then a 25% more? commission on all revenue generated from the episode for 12 months. Anticipated commission was believed to range from $2,500 to $8,000 depending on video performance. Zeke, only 19 at the time, jumped at the chance to make to him what seemed like a large sum of money. Many people have seen Zeke's episode, have called him an insufferable brat, and way Yeah, I remember that. Worse things, but don't seem to understand that the attitude portrayed by Zeke. So if this actually is some kind of, um, if this is, if this is like some kind of reality TV show thing and specifically referring to this, that would be why you can't really use like, oh, well, he was a liar in his original financial audit episodes. So we can't really use that as like him being a liar or as a person because he was portraying a personality. Right. So that would make. Yeah, that would be why you can't just watch the videos with Zeke in it if he's portraying a if that that would be that would make it that would be enough to this would be enough to say like hey I can't just look at the old Zeke videos because Zeke is portraying a character to some extent if this is literally considered a reality TV education focused shoot which that makes it seem like that is for the financial audit because the other thing was a dating show so I can't imagine you'd call that a reality TV education you know dating show um, but okay. Zeke's episode have called him an insufferable brat and way worse okay. things, but don't seem to understand that the attitude portrayed by Zeke isn't true to his normal personality from what I've seen talking to him, and it was designed to get as many views as possible okay. to increase his chance of making more money and getting more screen time. This tactic ended up working, and Zeke appeared two more times on the Caleb Hammer show, racking up a total of over 1 million views across the three episodes he appeared. Okay. Interesting. Those view totals should have netted him a large sum of money if the commission payments seen in the job offer were paid. However, Zeke's claim to have only received a couple hundred dollars in total for his time on the show. Caleb no longer offers commission payouts on his newer postings for actors on his show, and since he won't talk to me and threaten to sue me, I can't give his side of the story if the commission offer to Zeke was real or if those payments were ever made, so for now, Caleb's side of the story on that will have to remain a mystery. There is an old posting I have linked below that shows that commission offer, but I've never... Um... Okay, yeah, this seems to be more of a proof. This is obviously real, which I don't know why it wouldn't be. And that will have to remain a mystery. There is an old posting I have linked below that shows that... Okay, Millennials and Gen Z audit. Okay, yeah, that would be for the Gen Z audit, it seems like. Commission offer, but I've never heard... Casting Millennials and Gen Z audit. Uh, production states from this series, we would have an episode dedicated to your personal finances. We would gather some information and then compile it into a presentation that we'll go over with you, what we'll go over with you when we meet for the video shoot at your place or in a public setting. In this video, we'll be going over what you think you're spending versus what you actually are, where you think your money is going and where it actually is and how to achieve the uh, financial goals that you wish to. The purpose of this episode is to entertain and educate our audience. Personal finance is best learned from understanding other people's experiences. A contact will be signed for all parties to confirm that your information will be kept private. Anything you do not wish to be included in the video will not be included. And this is from 2022 also. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it sounds like their original one was a casting for the financial Caleb audit. Hammer might sue me for this. Um, sure, okay. Heard of any of the actors who appeared on the show receiving that amount? If you Additionally, production says, uh, no, let's see, negotiable daily pay spent stipend plus 25% commission on all revenue generated by the episode. We are anticipating this commission. Okay, gotcha. If you were one of the actors who did get those payments. I would love to hear from you, and my sure. email is linked below. While the issue of the alleged missing payments is important, the bigger issue came up in July of 2022 after Zeke's first appearance on the show when Caleb ended up leaving a very disturbing audio message on Zeke's phone. But they're not acting? Uh, they might not be acting. That I don't know. They might be acting a little bit. This might be something that slightly blurs the lines. It's hard to say. Um... It's, pos the it's possible that there's so, there's so many moving parts here. Sorry. It's possible that Caleb is doing this um, because he might be reaching out to people that are willing to do this without knowing who he is. So he's like, well, let's start out with people who are like want to be actors or who will come on the show. Um, and even, so even if, if Caleb doesn't explicitly say ham it up, the implication there could be to ham it up a little bit. There, there's a lot here. It kind of blurs the lines enough to be like, okay, I don't know how much of this is actually Zeke versus how much of this is his, his, him hamming it up for a little bit of, of flair. Um, he might also be hamming it up for a little bit of flair because he is somebody who wants to be a Twitch streamer, which seems to be a pretty big narrative. Um, 
either way, the mess, the private DMs of him telling he wants to kill him is a little crazy. And tell him you're a cool dude. Okay. Show when Caleb ended up leaving a very disturbing July of 2022 after Zeke's first appearance on the show. When Caleb ended up leaving a very disturbing audio message on Zeke's phone. Okay, so really quick, we're gonna read what it led up to it, and then we'll listen to the message and we'll go through it. Oh, I thought you said you didn't want to until you learn more by discussing it in person. Um, you don't have to do anything you don't want to to be very clear. Then we're gonna listen to what he says. Tell him you're a cool dude, and I want to like if there's anything. Just very disturbing audio message on Zeke's phone. Can tell him you're a cool dude, and I want to. Really quick, the only thing I'm a little frustrated with, and it probably doesn't matter, but it's a little frustrating, is if this will fucking back up enough. I'm going frame by frame for a specific reason. Because if for some reason it cuts off the first second, and I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, it's I'm like a fucking stickler. <laughs> Why'd you cut off the first second? It sounds like you said, I told him you were a really good dude. That's where it starts. You can tell him you're a cool dude, and I want to like... If there's anything, any connections that I have, which I've built a lot of connections in Austin, anything that I'm able to kind of link you to, you know, I definitely want to be helpful. The main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is, sorry, I had to burp. Um, one, I'm not used to OnlyFans, <laughs> straight up. Uh, it's not really my scene. Uh, you know, I'm a personal finance dude. I don't really know anything about that. Uh, two, I'm straight. I'm like 90% straight. I've definitely fooled around because I'm open-minded. Um, and you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But, you know, so, and this is like a, you know, a man-on-man -man thing. Uh, but essentially, I think, well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do. And what you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys make out. He would like to do that. What he, you guys, what he would like you guys to do, him fill you up. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick. And see, that that's why I didn't want to type this out either, because that's, like, weird for me to say. I don't, you know, it's not like we're friends or anything, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to uh, give you a blowjob. Uh, oh, I was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden, uh, blurred out and hidden. Your identity would be hidden. Um, um, and then if you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. Again, you would make more from that. And, uh, you know, he would eat your butt. <laughs> and you would make more for that. You can say no as well. Uh, uh, you know, you could top him, he could top you, whatever you're willing to do comes with more money, but you could literally do nothing. You could literally just lay back and let him just touch you for the video. And I guess for some reason, his subscribers love that and you'd get paid for it. So really that's what it is. And you know, I, I feel like Caleb's a little gayer than he's just admitting. Is there's things that I think I, gotta read I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation. And I'd be happier to talk over in person. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you think. When that audio okay just be clear i don't see a, a real issue with that that means nothing to me he's asking if he wants to do only fans and hook up with another creator he can say no you can go as far as you want I, there's no issue with that i don't care i don't care about that i'm gonna read the rest of what's here though we already saw in the last video but we're gonna we're going through the, the motions does that here uh, help clear some things up if you're not interested it's totally okay i'm just trying to be uh, a nice person and connect people to opportunities with an exclamation point i can let him know if you're not interested or if, you're, if you are or not interested i can let him know you're not interested if you're not then he says, I'm dead, uh, two Ds. Ha ha, what? Yeah, I mean, that's easier now I know and have a better understanding of what it is. And then Caleb says, so what do you think? He still wants to vet you and I can make him whatever. So he's, it sounds like, okay. So there's really nothing here. I don't care about that. Okay. In person, um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you oh, think. I should have, sorry. When that audio message was first leaked, a lot of people claimed it was fake. And in 2024, with advancement in AI voice cloning tech, even if it's real, it's not concerning at all. I don't care. Technology, I understand why some people believe that. However, despite that, Caleb has confirmed on his Reddit, as well as in emails to me, that the voicemail you heard is 100% him. Yeah, okay. And he makes no claim to it being altered in any way. What is disputed about that voice message is... My, my thing is, is and, and some people are saying that there's more stuff in the future that we'll see that makes it more fucked up, and that's perfectly fine. That message by itself isn't disturbing in the way that Scott said it was. Like, what's disturbing? Asking somebody if they want to en engage in a consensual adult legal activity... I, I don't <clears throat> like what, what is it? You know, it's a, it's very weird. It's a weird thing because now we're getting into that new age. Well, I guess prostitution in some capacity has always been legal, but, but we are in like this weird time where like, this is a form of prostitution that's legal. And now it's not specific industry porn stars who are doing it. It's people that have only fans and you can kind of take the power into your own hands a little bit. And so now it's kind of like, Anybody can do it. And so now it's like, yeah, Zeke, would you want to do that? You know what I mean? It's weird. It can be uncomfortable, but like, I don't see a huge issue with it. If you don't want to do it, you could just say no. 
Um, you know, there was no coercion in any capacity. He's just asking if he wants to do it. He says he can not do it multiple. He doesn't have to do it multiple times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's no pressure there in any capacity. He's opening him up to um, a, 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 an opportunity. You want to call it that. It's not illegal or bad, just bizarre. Exactly. I agree with that 100%. Weird. But weird is not illegal. Okay. Why it was left with Caleb and Zeke having very different stories. Zeke talked about doing OnlyFans modeling on his first appearance on the show and wanted help to grow on Twitch and OnlyFans from Caleb. Oh. Well, then doesn't that support Caleb's narrative that, like, Zeke was asking about doing an OnlyFans? Caleb's version of events was that he was simply trying to help Zeke out by connecting him with another guy to hook up with and okay. make money from adult content on OnlyFans. Okay. After talking to Zeke, he made it clear to me that he only ever wanted to fuck bitches and get money. Okay, who cares? Talking to him for... Like, not for nothing, but, like, every every male that starts in the porn industry has to fuck women, usually has to fuck dudes. So, I mean, but also, who cares? So... Here's the thing. You're telling me that it's confirmed that Zeke has an OnlyFans that he wanted to promote that he said on the first show. And okay, so here's one of the things we have before because part of we have the lines are a little blurred because the show seems to potentially be slightly performative. But if you're telling me that Zeke said on the show he wants to do OnlyFans and then offline he also said I want to do OnlyFans and that means that not all the show is performative and a lot of it does have um, like actually represent Zeke's idea. Or like Zeke is actually presenting himself maybe in a little bit more sensationalized way for, for views. That wasn't explicitly asked of him to do, but, you know, he might be doing that. I don't know. Either way, if he said he wants to do OnlyFans only with girls, and then Caleb's like, well, we could do one with a guy and you'd get paid for it if you want money. What's the problem? Why is it a problem? Other asked him why Caleb seemed so interested in trying to hook him up with a guy on OnlyFans and asked Zeke if he led Caleb on into thinking he was interested in doing adult content with other men, which he quickly denied. Okay, uh, this is a very small screenshot. I'm not sure why he made it so small. I'm going to, okay, let me just put it on the screen too. I just, it's annoying shit. Um, I have no problem with how you choose to identify, but Caleb wanted to set you up with another guy for sex in OnlyFans. Did you lead him to believe you were willing to hook up to, uh, with, the me, with the men for cat? Okay. What? Zeke said that the reason Caleb kept pushing the gay OnlyFans content when Zeke... I probably wouldn't be too interested in, uh, in going along with the deal, to be honest. Not really my type of thing. I can meet him, but it would be hard to convince me to do anything other than photos for people. So just to be clear, this is saying I'm 90% 90 90 sure I'm not going to do it, but I might be I might be able to be convinced. If you're saying I could meet him, but it would be very hard to convince me, what you're saying is that the potential is there to be convinced and that you're open to it. He didn't say... Absolutely not. He said, I don't think I would do that, but I will meet the guy and see if Zeke is Zeke is very small, interested, at least in exploring the concept of this for, for the, to do it. That's what this shows me. OK, I can meet him, but it would be hard to convince me to do anything other than photos. OK, so you'd be down. There's like a, there's a small chance and you're open to exploring that chance. Also, anything from the other OnlyFans girl. Oh, no worries. And I can still reach out to her. I'm not as close to her. Uh, what all would you be willing to do with him? Get felt up. Maybe get a BJ. Can't believe I'm typing these things. None of this is an issue. Zeke is continuously saying that he is somewhat interested in exploring the idea of potentially doing OnlyFans with a man. It's small, but he's not expressing absolutely not. Do not contact me about this anymore. He's saying, there's a chance I'll do it. It could be hard to convince me, but there's a chance. So there's nothing here so far, just to be clear. Zeke only wanted to work with women was because Zeke believed this was an attempt, I see. Okay. attempt by Caleb to hook up with him instead. I don't care. Why would Caleb offer to connect you with a man for sex and OnlyFans? Did you say something that would make him believe you were interested in men for, uh, in men or doing sexual things with him for money? Inter yeah, this. This. This is this. This right here. I could meet him, but it would be hard to convince me. This right here communicates that he would potentially be interested in doing stuff with men. Just to be clear, so I just want you to know something. I don't know if Scott's not picking this up, but like this is so far, there might be a smoke and gun. We're only ten minutes in, but so far, Caleb has done nothing wrong because he wanted to have sex with me. That's it, plain and simple. There was never anyone else, only him. That is why I was asking for women, which he never named or gave contacts. Okay, maybe the honestly, the woman might have. He might have reached out to the woman and said, "Would you be interested?" And the woman was like, "No, this guy's ugly as fuck." I don't know, <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, usually when you got these dudes fucking these girls for OnlyFans, it's usually like big buff dudes with pretty big schlongs or really skinny guys sometimes with really big schlongs or really just any guy with a big wingler. I don't know. I don't know. You know, the girl might have just thought he was ugly. And since nowadays people have the OnlyFans is putting their power in their own hands, maybe she's just like, no, I don't like this guy. I don't know. So what is it? Caleb, yeah, she said you're fucking dog shit ugly. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know.
Interestingly enough, the only piece of evidence Caleb sent me to support his claim actually supports Z claim that he never okay. wanted to do hardcore content or So if, just to be clear, everything that you've sent, showed us, Scott, has proved that Caleb was open to the conversation. So th what you're saying is not true. Never brings up doing content with men, saying he was only interested in softcore, lewds, and solo Um, okay. Let me just listen to what Caleb... Solo work. Okay. Hey, I'm posting more on my OF. Do you know anyone to help with that? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> This is so damning for fucking Zeke. What are you talking about? So that you're telling me this is Zeke saying I'm posting more on my OF. Do you know this? Like, because here's the thing. Even if Zeke wasn't trying to uh, push, push an OnlyFans and Caleb still said like, hey, do you want to do an OnlyFans club for money? Like, there's no problem as long as there's no pressure doing it. It's like, you don't have to. But we already have that. Zeke is open to doing OF. Caleb's just saying like, yeah, do you want to do gay shit? It's not that big of a deal. It's really not. Yeah, what kind of stuff are you posting? Uh, if you want, you can sign up. It's free right now. Well, I'm just curious because I've made good relationship with people who run their theirs in different ways. So I'm curious what plan, what you plan to post and stuff. And I can link you with someone similar. But just soft core and lose right now as solo. Once you get more followers and money into it, I want to do tapes with different models. I meet like do little vlogs of us meeting on stream and then off stream film content. What is this showing us? I'm not sure why Caleb sent this as evidence. I don't, I don't see how this is evidence is damning to Caleb. And saying he was only interested in softcore, lewds, and solo work. He said right now he's only interested in those, but he wants to expand after he does it for a while. I don't understand what, how, how does this damn Caleb? I'm not sure why Caleb sent this as evidence. To I don't understand why you think this is, is damning to Caleb. <laughs> I really don't understand. I really don't get what's happening. There must be something claim, at the end. As it makes it clear Zeke wasn't interested in the hardcore content Caleb went into detail about in the voicemail, so I'm really confused as to why Caleb sent me this. Whoever's okay. version of events you choose to believe, I think it's safe to say that the audio message... I don't have to believe... I be the version of events so far that I believe is obviously my own because I'm reading the fucking messages. They're both... Oh, Ze they Zeke wants to do OnlyFans and Caleb's like potentially trying to hook him up with other people to do OnlyFans and he explored the idea of doing gay porn. Uh, Zeke was moder slightly interested in the gay porn and he explored the concept of doing it. It's, it's nothing. None of this means anything. No there's nothing wrong so far. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Caleb left was creepy and inappropriate. What was creepy? Version of events you choose to believe. I think it's safe to say that the audio message Caleb left was creepy and inappropriate. No, not at all. Why? Zeke said he wanted to do OnlyFans porn, and the guy said, "Well, would you be open to do gang porn?" In the voice message, and then the guy said, "I'm very hard to convince me, but I can get vetted." There's no version of events here. This is why is it creepy and inappropriate? What's the, I, I truly wonder, what's the creepy and appropriate part of this conversation? I don't get it. He, Zeke was the one who came to Caleb about opening the conversation about doing pornography for legal sex work. So what makes it gross? This is Scott building his case. The wrong bad stuff is towards the end. So that's perfectly fine. There might be like really wrong bad stuff, but this doesn't build any case so far. Right now, we're adding moral prescriptions that what's happening is bad when nothing that's happened so far is bad. So like... There might be a lot at the end. None of this builds to anything. Okay. None of this builds to inappropriate anything right now. These are just like normal. These are the conversations you have when you engage in, in, in legal sex work. So, okay. Caleb runs a finance YouTube channel and many people call him the millennial Dave Ramsey. If Dave ever had someone call into the show and then ask them if they wanted to give a BJ on OnlyFans to help pay down some of their credit card debt, I'm pretty sure he would lose a large chunk of his audience for saying something like that. It doesn't matter if he would lose a large chunk of his audience. It, what matters is whether that would be like legal or not. Dave would obviously not give that advice because he's a boomer and that is kind of weird, but Zeke was specifically doing OnlyFans, so it's not a weird question to ask somebody. I don't understand. Caleb claims he was just trying to help Zeke out, and okay. if that was the case, there was clearly a better option to do that. What's the better option? Option one would have been to not talk about OnlyFans at all, since mixing finance content and sex work is probably not the best idea. But we're not talking about mixing finance and sec sex work. We're talking about mixing finance and another legal job opportunity. It's uncomfortable. I get it. But like, what? Okay. Option two would have been to leave a simple message for Zeke, telling him he had an OnlyFans friend who might want to work with him, and then simply give Zeke's contact info to the friend so the two of them could work something out. Why can't... I don't, I'm not a truly real question. Why? Why can't... Why is Caleb not allowed to middleman here? You're saying that he like that he was wrong for continuing to have the conversation with so it doesn't make any this doesn't make you what you're saying is no fucking sense because those conversations that Caleb was having with Zeke was like exploring if he'd even be interested before work talking to the guy. I don't understand. So like why I don't I don't see the problem with what Zeke did. It just you're if right now this is like really big pearl clutching. This is like you're pulling you're you're picking at straws, brother. You're grasping at straws right now. 
Option three, the nuclear choice that Caleb picked, comes across incredibly creepy. No, it doesn't. Unprofessional. No, it um, no, I don't think that it does. I think that, no. And in my opinion, gives some belief to some of Zeke's claims because of how detailed the voice message was, along with Caleb's self-reveal that he is only 90% straight. That part was like weird that Caleb even brought up his sexuality. So maybe Caleb's fucking gay and we'll figure that out at the end of the video. Like, oh no, Caleb's gay. I don't care about that. Um... He, dude, he asks about, like, that's what you do in, in sex work. Hey, you blowjobs. Okay. okay. And his follow-up text of telling Zeke he would needed to vet him in person before connecting him with his only fan friend. This text of telling Zeke he would needed to vet him in So what do you think? He wants me to vet you, and I can make him cover your gas for the trip. In person. Before Before connecting him with his only fan friend. This That's not what's being said. Of text of telling Zeke he would needed to vet him in person before connecting him with his only fan friend. This that's that's your interpretation of what's being said. What actually gets said here. Oh, of text of telling Zeke he would needed to vet him. What actually gets said here. So what do you think? He still wants me to vet you, and I can make him cover your gas for the trip. So it's possible the guy would be there. They both vet him together. But like we don't know what does vetting mean. What what do you mean by vet? Are are you claiming that like the vetting would be Caleb shoving his dick in his ass? <laughs> or is the the vetting like, hey, are you open? I don't I don't know. I feel like you're What do you think he means by vetting you? In person before connecting him with his only fan friend. This comment doesn't make any sense to me since Caleb Why? and Zeke had already shot an episode of Financial Audit together, so I don't understand what sort of vetting process Caleb had in mind. I don't know to see how like actually comfortable or what what he would be willing to do comfortability wise. Um Honest, I don't know. I really have no idea. This wasn't Caleb's first. Again, the guy said that he would be open to being convinced, but he's a very low chance of it. So none of it matters. Zeke's response wasn't stop talking about this. It was actually keep talking about this, but I don't know if I'll be convinced. Attempted offering OnlyFans to people who appeared on his show. Maybe he wants him to take a fucking STD test. I don't know. On Caleb's subreddit early on in his YouTube career, he made a post explaining he had offered OnlyFans work unsolicited to several of the actors who appeared on his show. Okay, I'm going to read through that right now. Let's see what that is. Um, hey y'all, uh, hey y'all, as always here, I want to get your opinion on something because we should all hold each other accountable. As longtime viewers know, some of my first few guests were from a site called Backstage. It's a casting website as I had no audience to come on the show. Now, though these are aspiring actors and more, nothing was fake. It was still hundred percent real. I just assumed people, uh, wanted some cloud as well. That makes sense. Okay. Um, during my first six months making videos, I started becoming friends with local creators. Many streamers also have OnlyFans, and they said they are always looking for people to collaborate with. Being a very open-minded person, I figured it would be nice to offer potential opportunities to some guests. I've done this with a variety for a variety of jobs and con uh, connects as I want to see them improve, of course. Three to four times with the actors. Some already had OF. So he's saying that some of the people that, that that were the actors, I offered if they wanted to uh, wanted the connection to come to some creators that had OnlyFans. Then, if so, I would just connect them. Now, to me, I would find this weird if someone offered me a connection. I'd just say no. But I've seen some say this is weird or creepy. Is it? I always wanted to be the person. Yeah, I don't think this is an issue. I, again, I don't. I don't. I'm not like. You can say no as long as Caleb isn't like you have to do this or I won't. If if you show me Caleb saying I will not let you on my show unless you do OnlyFans with somebody. That's that. Then we have a huge problem of, of Caleb leveraging his power against people. But unless you show him either doing that or when he asks people to do OnlyFans, he's overly and aggressively pushy and constantly pushing a boundary, which we have not seen. Zeke was open to it the entire time from everything that you showed us. It's not a little creepy at all. Listen, you guys, I'm not trying to be rude at all. I respect people who think the OnlyFans is weird. I respect people who think that it's like a ridiculous profession. I get it. I respect that. But it's time we need to we it, we have to grow up a little bit and we have to like be a little mature about this. This is legal sex work. So, like it's not a big deal. Um that's really what it boils down to. That's where I'm coming from. You can think it's you can think it's it's gross and weird, but creepy. No, I don't really think it's creepy. Oh, <clears throat> and wanted to ask his audience if they felt this was appropriate. Okay. After his audience overwhelmingly made it clear they felt this was not appropriate. Okay. Let's see what the response. I don't even know why I bother. <laughs> like I might as well just watch the video. I'm not even gonna play the game anymore. Uh, OnlyFans. Uh, yes, I want to. Yeah, if I went to a personal finance expert to help and they offered me an opportunity to make money by connecting me to the OF creator, presumably to have sex for money on the camera, I would find that extremely fucking weird, inappropriate, and unprofessional. It seems like you're trying to use your platform to get financially vulnerable people involved in sex work. 
Um, I'm not against sex work if that's what somebody chooses for themselves. But honestly, this is shocking and undermines your credibility. I don't think it is. I, that, that's that person's opinion. That's fine. Um, I don't really think it's that inappropriate. I don't think it's that unprofessional. This isn't like a business meeting. <sighs> um, okay. Let's see. I would absolutely avoid it unless somebody specifically asked for it. If somebody that ran an OF or something similar came onto the show and was looking to collaborate with somebody, that's how you end up with some of the drama from earlier this week. My honest thought that most relates is that I'm in need of meeting with a financial advisor. If during the meeting at any point they suggest them, uh, myself or my wife to do porn to make extra money, I would be extremely creeped out. I love your content. You give great advice and help us all a platform, but that ain't fair. Uh, but that ain't fair. Clear this up and keep doing it. So I think that would have been better to not broach the concept of doing only fans for everybody i agree with that um it is something that's going to be considered weird to a lot of people if they bring it up first i think that's fine but that doesn't mean that it's inappropriate to ask people to do it if they wanted to do it like i don't like this isn't something and this person's this person's perspective of it seems like you're trying to platform using platform to get financially vulnerable people involved in sex work that's that's that seems stupid to me like i don't understand like they don't have to do it. If they are more willing to do something because they have less money, like that's different from you f pressuring somebody into doing something. If somebody's like, hey, I have a job opportunity for you to work somewhere, and I'm like low on cash, and I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll do it. I didn't want to do the job. Like, what does it really matter? Um, you can still say no if you don't want to do it, as long as he's not being like, coercive. But like right now, this is a legal profession to engage in. So I don't care that much. It, and question why he was doing this, Caleb quickly deleted the post. Unfortunately, Zeke's okay. claims against Caleb don't end there, as Zeke has also made the claim that Caleb inappropriately touched him after okay. the filming of their second episode together. Yeah, you're claiming he actually touched you inappropriately as well? Yeah, he did. He locked me in his house after the second filming. Uh, when his friend who helps him film, he left. I was locked in his house, and he sat me down on his couch in the living room, and he was trying... Like, the reason why I was on those shows so many times is because I was looking for opportunity and he kept promising opportunity aside from OnlyFans stuff but he was really trying to lure me in with that he was breadcrumbing me and so the second time what opportunity did he promise you with can you show us that filmed he i was on the couch and he would not let me leave he would not pay me um what i was owed for that filming and okay show i need to see proof of that he would not not only would he not pay you for what you filmed but the the the, the implication here is that not only would he not pay him but he wouldn't pay him unless he did the OnlyFans. You got to show that. Essentially, he didn't give me the money until he gro groped me. And I needed that money to go home. Because he knew all my personal finances. He knew how much money I had. I had no money when I showed up. I, all right. Can you prove any of this? I had zero money because I had spent it on This could be real, but you have to show us well, any fucking proof of this. Yes, to get to Austin. He knew that. Okay. How much did he, uh, did he claim he was going to be giving you? Thousands. And how much did you have contact? Specifically how much? It was thousands of dollars, and he only paid me less than $200 for, for, for filming. While Caleb has never denied the voice... Okay. I mean, I, you just have to prove all that. This mail is real. He has always claimed <clears throat> that the other accusations Zeke has made against him are completely false. Okay. Caleb has claimed that Zeke threatened his life and doxed him, and this is... I saw the text messages, so unless those are fake. Just a disgruntled former actor on the show, unhappy that he didn't want to bring Zeke back for more episodes. When I asked Zeke about that, I was actually shocked that he <clears throat> openly admitted to me that he had threatened Caleb's life. So then why the fuck are you taking? <laughs> okay. You're not lying? You didn't threaten to kill him? Of course I did. He, he, he molested me. Okay. okay. So wait, but you uh, are confirming that, that you said that? That. Yeah. that? Did that bring like a little bit of a red flag? Do you, it's not, it's, it's a little bit more than like I threatened his life, by the way. It's a lot. Like, did you, vet, did you, I would have erred on the side of caution platforming somebody who's making these insanely serious. All right, guys, let's. Like threats. I mean, I could probably bring them up at the. They're fucking. Ins they're insane. Like, just you could just watch the video at the end. I, I don't know. <laughs> is this video taken down? What is this? Oh, somebody took down one of their videos. I when I was reacting to. Hey, so really quick before the, we. These messages are fucking crazy, dude. Like he says some wild stuff to the guy. It's wild. Um. It's <laughs> it's in, it's unhinged. Mm. He, he, him calling me a liar is him lying, but I mean, of course I threatened to kill him, but it wasn't really like, um, I'm going to do it. It was more like, be scared. No, I have to. <laughs> so you're saying I wasn't, I, it doesn't matter if your intention of threatening to kill somebody is I wasn't really going to do it. It matters if like, what are you talking about? <laughs> look at this. I'm going to send serial killers after you someday. Someday, mark my words. You sexually abused me and took advantage of me. You're going to receive justice for all your wrongdoing. It's all over your social media. Suggest you disappear before you disappear. Trust me. Uh, you're done for. I don't give a fuck. N, my friend. 
You're a dead man. Tell anyone. Why do you do? This is insane. <laughs> okay. You have to show any proof that this guy tries to take advantage of him sexually. This is wild. Say that Zeke's behavior of threatening Caleb's life, doxing him, and his somewhat unhinged ramblings on social media have made a lot of people question his motives and unwilling to try so why is it that like when caleb asks a very legal reasonable question uh whether if zeke wants to do only fans you're saying that's incredibly creepy but this is not fucking incredibly creepy why aren't you labeling this threatening to send killers after him is not incredibly creepy that's fucking creepy dude somebody saying that they're gonna kill you that's not creepy to you <laughs> Come on, that this is this is the problem that I have so far with this video. Again, and I keep qualifying this because I just want you guys to know because I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to be unbiased. This could be very real, and there might be more stuff. We're only about halfway through the video, but the framing so far is that Caleb is a super creepy guy for asking for when Zeke came to him to do OnlyFans, saying like, "Hey, do you want to do it with a guy?" And then Caleb being, I'm, or excuse me, Zeke being like, "I'm, I probably wouldn't do it, but I'm a little bit open to it." And you're saying he's incredibly creepy for that. But Zeke threatening to send to serial killers isn't incredibly creepy behavior. It, to me, communicates, and maybe I'm wrong, that you are very biased against Caleb. And again, maybe later we're going to see that Caleb is a fucking serial predator. And maybe that's why. But so far, we got nothing. So far, this seems like you're trying to prime us to think that Caleb's a horrible person for actions that aren't bad. That's the problem trust his story about the things he claims Caleb did to him. If he had never acted in that way, I think a lot more people would be willing to give the benefit of the doubt to him. Yeah, but he did act that way, so. Now, in my own personal opinion, I've actually been in a relationship with a woman who had been assaulted in the past, and the anger and violent outbursts... They need to recognize the changes in the behavior that occur after blank assaults coming. Violent outbursts, anxiety, depression, physical scars from blank abuse. Ah! First were something that I experienced firsthand. So... Uh, listen. <laughs> Me... I under listen. I understand sexual assault like very well. Okay, I understand that you are prone to violent outbursts. I do get it. But the from what I remember, the the pretext to some those messages was please work with me, please work with me, please work with me. And then it shifted when Caleb's like, not right now. You need to make an update. And then all of a sudden, hey, you sorry. rape me. You rape me. So it the the tone swaps so immediately. Um. Like, hey, how's the massage? Like, everything is super, like, nice. They have a nice exchange. You could just watch this video. Everything's, like, in my description of my video. This is... So, in the description is my... Me going over the entire, like, original Caleb Haver thing in the sources. And then in those sources, this is this is a video here that you could look up a pathological liar. This just shows the screenshots. Um, the, the tone of the messages starts out with, like, please work with me. Please, please work with me again. Um, it's Caleb... Oh, excuse me. It's Zeke being super aggressive about how he wants to be on the show. There's tons of messages here that you guys can parse through and read. And then when he doesn't get what he wants, all of a sudden you raped me. I'm going to send killers after you. So, you know, like I... Is it possible that this comes from trauma? Maybe. I don't know if I believe... I don't believe that. I mean, I don't know. You have to show me more. But it, it makes more sense that Zeke wanted to get what he... Like was begging to get what he wanted and then flipped the switch the second that Caleb, he realized Caleb wasn't going to have him on anytime soon. And then boom, all of a sudden like false allegations. Again, you have to show me more than like the guy touched me. I mean, so far you got nothing. And if anything, I don't know. I'm, I'm questioning your ability to parse through information from Scott's perspective, in my opinion, so far. While other people may quickly write Zeke off as a schizo liar, I don't think it's fair to immediately claim everything he says is fake just because he's acted inappropriately on how he handled this. We can talk about it if you want. I'm just... <laughs> Look at this. I'm saying, it's very clear to me that this Zeke guy is full of shit. Yeah. They oh, by the way, let me just, let me just rewind as you can see me. I'm wearing the same hat! We can talk about it if you want. I'm just saying. It's, I guess he watched my video. Uh, yeah. Very clear to me that this Zeke guy is full of shit. Yeah. It's funny because we were just looking at the same video. We were just like watching like the uh, the messages based on all the stuff that we're seeing here. <laughs> that, that's all I have to say, dude. That that was that was uh, just to be clear. When I say all the stuff that we looked into, I want to be clear about what I meant by all the stuff that we looked into. That was when I was Bring looking. you in. That was at we're, we're I'm talking about it hour over an hour because this is around the time that he that he got me right like that he he got me in the video this is like an hour into my video i i looked through an hour of information this wasn't me just being like hey this is stupid this was me and about an hour in my video my original video is an hour and 20 minutes long like i was going over this stuff in detail so it's not like i looked at it for two seconds and said oh this is stupid we're like over an hour in we're at like an hour in of me going like, oh shit, like this guy seems full of fuck. Like after an hour of parsing through informations. 
did I just say? An hour through par- of parsing through information, just to be clear. So, <laughs> based on all the stuff that we're seeing here. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say, dude. Zeke's story has been talked about by a few channels now, and if it were just Zeke's claims about Caleb, I probably wouldn't cover this story, since Zeke's claims have already been told several times before, and unfortunately for him, his pack's actions make him look untrustworthy in the eyes of many who see him. I ended up talking to a few friends and several other YouTube creators as well, and one thing that was brought up- Yeah, I know the the guy I was reacting to originally, like, messaged Scott. Because I was like, what I I said in my video was, I was like, listen, man, I wouldn't cover this. I told the guy that I was reacting to, because he popped in my chat, I said, listen, man, after seeing all this, I think it's it would probably not be a good idea for Scott to platform this information because it's absolutely unhinged. That might hurt his credibility. That's what I said. I'm being reasonable. I don't think I'm being a fucking dick. I don't dislike the Scott guy, okay? I'm only upset that I I, I bought my established titles too late, all right? <laughs> I bought it too early. I mean, before I was too late, I bought it before I was told that I'm not really a Scottish lord. Um, I'm just saying, dude, I'm just looking at this as unbiased as possible. Was that if there was any truth to Zeke's story, Caleb has probably acted inappropriately in the past as well. So far, the story you showed us, though, is like Caleb's innocent, like just to be clear. Someone who would so brazenly do what Zeke claims he did would have other skeletons in his closet. It didn't take long for another source to come forward, okay. and I was contacted on Twitter by a former friend of Caleb who had known him for years. He went into detail okay. about their history, and while How I... How do you know it wasn't foreign? Do you, are you sure it wasn't Caleb? have to keep most of his... Oh, sorry. Former friend of Caleb. Who am I thinking of? Sorry. I'm, just, I'm being stupid. By a former friend of Caleb I thought, who had known... I keep getting Caleb and Zeke confused. ...on him for years. Okay. He went into detail... Did he prove that? ...about their history, and while I have to keep most of his initial message private so as not to dox him, his final paragraph paints Caleb in a very bad light. I share all... Okay. As I'm just being, I'm just curious. Is there a way for you to actually verify that this was a friend of Caleb's for a long time? Be- and no offense, because so far the narrative you're pushing, based on the information you showed, they don't match. It's hard to take you as like a credible source of information. I don't mean that to be say that as a dick, but all of this with you to say that everything I know about Caleb, based on years of experience and communication with him, tells me that any of these allegations made against him are true. What allegations? He believes whole- the ones where he like asked if they wanted to do OnlyFans and so they didn't have to wholeheartedly in his superiority to other people, which is why I believe he enjoys telling people about how wrong they are and need to do everything different with their finances. I don't care. This is not it's something. Uh, I, oh, maybe he's a kind of a dick. I don't care. I think he gets off on feeling smarter and better than other people. Maybe I don't care. That's not illegal. It just makes you a dick. Who cares? And because of his frequent and unwanted sexual comments, I am not surprised in the least that someone has reported that he has made unwanted advances and slash or similar. What does that mean? His frequent and unwanted sexual comments. I just, I need more, con- like, what does that mean? So you're like, did he make a bad sexual jokes with his friend? I, I just need to be, I need to understand. I need more context. Like, what does that mean? What is a, what does a frequent and unwanted sexual comment mean? I, I need more information if we're going to we're going to try to label somebody a fucking sexual predator. You have to be very specific about it. Did the friends say that the guy would like constantly make sex jokes to his friend of however many years that you just claimed? Or was he constantly like being super aggressively pushy? Like, what does that mean? He's a narcissist through and through, and he thinks his supposed intellectual and moral superiority make him immune to consequences or mistakes. Most of this just reads that Caleb's kind of a dick and thinks he's better than people. I don't care. We're not we're not talking about the moral character of somebody, if they're a good or bad person. We're talking about if they're a fucking sexual predator, right? That's what you're kind of, that's the implication of this video so far. This source wants to remain anonymous. Is, is there is there like an old friend? Is his old friend give us an example? Do we have like a picture of him and the old friend? Have you verified that it's a friend? Or is this somebody who just came forward pretending to be a friend? I, there needs to be a lot more here. Like, I can't just, I can't just take this on. Like, oh, that, oh, it's an old friend who thinks he's a bad guy. Like, okay, maybe him and his old friend had a fucking falling out. I need more. I need, I need, I need more. Due to the constant death threat, Zeke and others have. Ah, but he kept commenting on his gray sweatpants. <laughs> Is that real? Did you free watch or are you fucking with me? Received from Caleb's fans, but I have verified that he did indeed know Caleb for several years. Okay. If Caleb were to claim this was a lie, I have plenty of evidence the two of them know each other and would be able to prove this source isn't made up. Sure, you said he was a close friend. Can you prove that? Can you show us something? If Caleb were to ever claim this source isn't really who he says he is. Okay. The source ended up sending me dozens of chat messages he claims okay. are of Caleb and gotcha. the true show a consistent pattern of unwanted sexual comments towards others in the group as well as gotcha. further sexual themes comments about a 16 year old boy okay let's see it let's see that just how much was uncovered at the time of filming this video even more is still being found i've done everything in my power to confirm these messages are maybe the second half will actually have something in there including sending one that has the sexually themed message about a 16 year old boy to caleb to ask if he wanted to deny if it was real 
Caleb's response was that it was very out of context, but never did. I do not feel comfortable communicating with you because of your previous communications, but I'm going to connect you with my attorney blank. The above is very out of context, but I'll let you two connect more information. Okay. What is denied? It wasn't from him. <laughs> Caleb's lawyer reached out to me after that email and asked that I not share what was in her email. So I'll honor that request and keep that conversation private. Okay. Now, it before seems we like a Caleb Hammer is 29. So, okay, let's see what we got. Look at the chat messages. I have to get some see. context as to where these actually came from. And to do that, we have to talk about Caleb's past. Now, despite Caleb having a channel about financial audits, he actually has no business degree and instead studied music <laughs> composition at Western Michigan University, where he graduated. Award-winning composer Caleb Hammer, B1995, hails from Kalamazoo. Okay, that matches up with this, Caleb being uh, from, from 29 years old. Okay. Uh, from Kalamazoo, Missouri. I'm assuming that's what MI means, right? Okay. Um, or Michigan. Jesus Christ. It says fucking Michigan. Why did I say Missouri, dude? I look like a doofus. And currently resides in Austin, Texas. He has studied composition at Western Michigan University with Dr. Richard Adams and Dr. Elisa R. Co oh, I can't say that word. I'm white. Where he also chaired as the vice president for the WSCA. His musical uh, music has been performed nationwide since 2017 with some notable premises our premieres taking place with the Desert Winds Blue Lake uh, Concert Band and the West Point Band. Nerd! Uh, Caleb is an active member of the new music community. This guy's totally gay, by the way. Like, dude, you, 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 listen, no offense, Caleb, you're gay as fuck. Just based on me reading this, you're in the band? <sighs> Come on. You're a composer? <laughs> I'm maybe like 10% gay. Nah, dude, come on. Does this guy come from like a super Christian household? <laughs> totally. I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, but uh, he's an active member of the new music community in the United States. His spare uh, time, he has created arrangements and cover. Okay, his album, whatever. I don't care. Okay. Okay, Hammer Music for Media. In 2018. Following that, he began composing music and even created a YouTube channel that followed his musical endeavors as well. It was around this time that Caleb ended up joining a group known as the Millennium Composers Initiative. Okay. This group was created to bring young composers from around the world together so they could- There's nothing wrong with being gay, by the way. Share ideas and foster growth for each other's musical careers. Caleb is still in this- Yeah, bro's 10% straight, right? ...group to this day, and you can find his picture on their Instagram page and website. However, he no longer seems to be an active member since his finance YouTube channel took off. Okay. This group eventually started a Facebook group chat for its members to talk about their musical careers, as well as other topics, and it's from this you're gonna give us a one time at band camp chat that the alleged text from caleb come from the source of how old is the chat how old is this chat it seems like right this was something that he's been doing since for a long time so is this chat 10 years old this group to this day and you can find his off this group eventually when did uh, did they show when this starts specifically when they started doing this uh, was i not listening it's totally like i sometimes i should be paying that many attention. of the early guests i need to be paying more attention to the dates did they give out specific dates Website. However, he no longer seems to be an active member since his finance YouTube channel took off. This group eventually started a Facebook group chat for its members to talk about their musical careers, as well as other topics, and it's from this chat that the alleged texts from Caleb come from. The source of the text, who asked me to conceal his identity, explains to what extent he believed the group was for. We felt, or at least I got the impression, that we had very clearly agreed that it was, uh, it was a professional chat uh, and that we had uh, professional friendships and okay. that we were approaching it in that way we, we did not um we did not really uh touch on topics uh like that very much the topics okay just to be clear so this this started 11 years ago to last year so we're talking about one from him when he was 18 to 28 um i just want to get the context there of when when we got all this information okay that he felt were inappropriate are what we're going to be focusing on logs are from six years ago and he's 23 is that confirmed the first one that made several people uncomfortable was Caleb's comments about finding a 16-year-old boy hot. Now, in this chat group, everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used. I was told okay. that Caleb picked many of these nicknames. Was the 16-year-old hot? I'm kidding. I'm just joking. Names, but a few were picked by other members. <laughs> Caleb was allegedly known as Super Ho Diddly Ho. So the user known as Has Sex All The Time says, what's this hit beat you got playing? <laughs> okay. They're in a video chat. What was the video chat about? Fuck, at Caleb Howard, what you doing? Caleb, mute your chat. It's too loud. Um, what's this hit beat you playing? Smoking is gross. So is saying that 15-year-old boys are hot. Oh, damn. And then he says, 16. Doesn't make your, class, your case any better. <laughs> I would want to know what the context is. Are they joking around? Super Ho responds with, smoking is gross. Uncut responds with, <laughs> <laughs> Thinking from a picture is cute isn't bad. I didn't think the person was cut because they are, are young. He had facial hair. Like, come on. <laughs> it sounds... This is fucking preposterous, dude. You gotta not be saying shit like this, Caleb. Um, haha, thinking from a picture is cute, isn't bad. I don't think the person was cut because they were young. Okay. 
he had facial hair. Like, come on. Okay, so what it sounds like is Caleb didn't realize that they were 16, so maybe he has the ability to, to work off of that. Okay. So is saying that 15-year-old boys are hot. Dancing says, oh, <clears> damn. <throat> Superho responds with 16. Uncut says, doesn't make your case any better. Superho responds with, haha, thinking from a picture is cute isn't bad. I don't think the person was- This guy's name is Dancing Gay Fire, dude. Caleb, you're also gay. I'm telling you right now. Uh, because they are young. He had facial hair. Like, come on. Uncut says, why screenshot? Because Superho had taken a picture of this guy's Snapchat of his 16-year-old friend. And Superho says, he hot, is gay, please. Uncut says, he's 16 and no, effing perv. Superho responds with shame. Uncut says, what would the age of consent in Michigan? Superho says 16. Uh, this is definitely concerning. Uncut says, Texas is 17. And Superho says, shame. This is the... It's definitely concerning. I'll give you that. It's definitely concerning. This could be something. Okay. Uh, could be it could be a, a weird joke. Maybe he didn't realize it was 16, the kid was sixteen at first, and then after he found out, he was just playing into it as a joke with his friends. Or maybe this dude is very inappropriate. Um, maybe he thinks sixteen is okay because he was from Michigan. Uh, blah, 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 blah. what the fuck is the age of consent in Michigan? You asshole! This is so annoying. Age of consent. It's 16. That could be it. I mean, listen, I'm very uncomfortable when anybody's like, oh, I think a 16-year-old is attractive. That's like a, a grown adult with, with that's not in a reasonable age range. Although we still haven't gotten when this chat came. Oh, wait, we did right here. 2018. Okay, beautiful. This was six years ago. Caleb would have been 23. 23 or 16 is not reasonable. Um, if it is the age of consent in his state, I still think that's gross. You should know better. But what I will say is I think that's a more of a problem with the state allowing that to be okay because then you're as somebody's growing up you're basically communicating to them that it's okay for you to talk to 16 year olds in a sexual capacity or think of them in a sexual capacity because that's our age of consent and that gets into a conversation about like you know the environmental impact of a stupid ages of consent um which is a huge problem as well i mean obviously you need to boost that up to like 18 or more um so this is concerning it's not a smoking gun it is certainly concerning though Superho says 16, <coughs> Uncut says Texas is 17, and Superho says shame. This is the message I sent to Caleb to confirm if they were real, which is when he replied that they were very out of context. I asked the informant if there okay. was more context to this story, which he replied that there wasn't. To give a little bit more context, I, I reached out to Caleb for comment on this. He said this was taken very out of context. So just one one thing, oh, I thought that was my screen. Um, One thing I'm going to say is that a pair and, and, and listen i'm tearing it apart because that's what i have to do i'm not trying to invalidate anything but what scott said was that this individual had said that this was a very professional group chat that's at least the idea he got one person's name is uncut someone else's name is super ho diddly ho and then um there's, i think there's another name in there the other person's name is dancing gay fire so Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're trying to say that this person is claiming this is supposed to be a super, a super professional group chat, but everybody's name is some kind of gay shit, it doesn't sound like this is a super professional group chat. That doesn't mean that Caleb wasn't trying to say weird shit about 16 year olds. But what I will say is that the tone, if this person is telling us that it's a super professional group chat, which is what I remember hearing, I could be wrong. Maybe I misheard something. But if he's trying to tell you the tell you the narrative that this was a super professional group chat, but everybody's name was sucking fat cocks, I'm thinking that maybe he's lying, and it sounds like he's not a very responsible narrator of information, right? There, I don't think that this is a super. I this doesn't read to me as some kind of like super professional group chat with somebody's name diddly ho diddly super ho diddly ho uncut. What does uncut mean? It probably means that their fucking cock is uncut, and then dancing gay fire. Okay, like this doesn't this doesn't see this right? <clears throat> I don't. I think that these are all. Oh, those are their government names. You're right. They must be foreign. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. Um. Oh, did Caleb name those people? He he named them that. Does that make sense? Are you lying to me, or is that like the thing? Did he say that Caleb named the people uncut? <laughs> Can you do that? I, did I miss something, or are you just saying something to be fucking ridiculous? Um. Okay. Did he did he, did he say somewhere he named them? <laughs> okay, so Scott said that they. Okay, I just want to be clear. That uh, Scott said that they picked those names. That he, Caleb, picked those names. Friendships and that we was 
about their musical careers. Is that true? Its YouTube channel took off. This group eventually started a Facebook group chat for its members to talk about their musical careers. How do you do that? As well as other topics. And it's from this chat that the alleged texts from Caleb come from. The source of the text who asked me to conceal his identity explains to what extent he believed the group was for. We. Facebook doesn't allow you to rename people. How does how do people rename it? He said it before he showed felt, it. Or at least I got Can you do that? The impression that we had very clearly agreed that it was uh, it was a professional chat uh, and that we had uh, professional friendships and that we were approaching it in that way. We we did not um, we did not really uh, touch on topics uh, like that very much. The topics that he felt were inappropriate are what we're going to be focusing on. The first one that made several people uncomfortable was Caleb's comments about finding a 16-year-old boy hot. Now, in this chat group, everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used. I was told that Caleb picked many of these nicknames, but a few were picked by other members. What does that mean? What does it mean that Caleb picked the nickname? Does it mean that Caleb actively changed their nickname, or does it mean that Caleb picked their nickname and then they named themselves the nickname? I don't... I, uh... Actual name being comments about finding a 16-year-old boy hot. Now, in this chat group, everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used. Okay. I was told that Caleb picked many of these nicknames, but a few were picked by other members. Which ones were picked by himself and which ones were picked by other members? That's very important. You can change it? Okay. Caleb was allegedly known as Super Ho Diddly Ho. I don't know. I'm still not convinced. Like, uh, you can change the names of people in a group chat that you're with? <sighs> change Facebook names just a limited number of times. It sounds like uh, he mean, uh, it means he told them to change their name to stuff that has a nickname. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, though. Um, are these screenshots from Caleb's phone when he makes his, it shows that the chat logs that the name was changed. Scott won't tell you that's silly. Although I hate starting lives, but I'm, I don't know. There's something weird about so this. So the user. I, I don't know. Uh, listen. Okay. I listen. Okay. I don't think it, okay, this is so fucking weird. I don't understand how Facebook works. I'm like weird. Um, does the per the, I guess these are some questions. Some questions. First of all, does the person have to actively allow their nickname to be changed? Can they? Can the one person do it themselves? How does that work? Uh, I understand that it's not changing their actual names. It's just a group chat in the thing. But do you change it yourself, or does somebody else change your nickname? Um. If you're using Facebook Messenger, you can set a nickname for them. Okay, but. So is this is this from Caleb's perspective? You can you can change it only for the group chat. Um, this person sees it and they can change it themselves if they don't want it. Okay, that sounds accurate. It gives you the option to assign a nickname to the users. This is very, it's a very important. The reason I'm harping on such a stupid point is like it's it is very important to the overall conversation here. Um. Once uh, the Facebook Messenger on your app on your phone, you'll land on the Facebook home screen, tap on the conversation where you want to set the nickname for the person. That conversation thread opens. Now tap uh, the person's conversation it appears at the top of the screen information. Okay. Tap nicknames and many of the nicknames screen appear. Tap the person that you want to assign a nickname and the nickname when it opens. Enter the nickname you want to assign the user and finally tap save on it. Okay, great. If you use the nickname, the contact will be able to see this in the chat history. Okay, if you assign a nickname, the the chat will be able to see this. Can you, we'd have to see that. I would like to see that. Okay, this guy's name is has sex all the time. <laughs> great, we got another one. Okay, so... I, we don't, there's the, like, these are very important questions because it, it's about the tone of the, the conversation, but regardless of, here's what we do know. Caleb cho chose some of those nicknames and some other people chose other nicknames. So let's say I have like the four people in here, uncut has sex all the time, dancing gay fire and, um, super ho diddly ho. Let's say one of them chose their own nickname. To me, it doesn't really matter who chose the nickname because it's very clear that the tone of this conversation is not particularly professional. <laughs> and that's and that's uh, this doesn't seem like a very professional uh this doesn't seem like a very professional group chat i just think that that's i i truly don't think this is a very professional group chat regardless that doesn't excuse what caleb was talking about i'm just saying that the, the tone is like yeah i was under the impression this was super professional but everybody's name is something like sexual and so it sounds like a bunch of boys getting together making penis jokes um 
It's not even Facebook. This is refers to joining the video chat. Okay. I'm just saying, like, this is, it's very doubtful that this was ever a very professional group chat if everything's like penis names. And I, I don't doubt that. I'm like, okay, that it's just supposed to be like a stupid little group chat. Maybe they're all friends and they have, they're part of the whatever, these gay straight alliance <laughs> music edition. Thank you so much for the 12 months, small god. Hope everything is good, Pop. I love the content, baby. Thank you so much, uh, Ma Massy Dog. Incredible. Plus the topics are nothing to do with music. Exactly. It sounds like a bunch of friends getting together being stupid. Yeah, it I'm seems very professional. Cut says, Texas is 17, and Superho says, Shame. Okay, we can move forward from this, sorry. And get context. I asked the informant if there was more context to this story, which he replied that there wasn't. To give a little bit more context, I, I reached out to Caleb <clears throat> for comment on this. He said this was taken very out of context, didn't give me any other info around that. So just anything you know around this, this particular incident. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, it's interesting that he'd say that, uh, particularly because I'm I'm not sure there's there's any more context uh, out of which it could be taken. Um, that could be true. Uh, can we see more of the group chat, or why is it only up until that point? Like, is there more to the group chat that we could see? They were in a video call, so I don't know what did they say in the video call. I guess like I don't know how we could even really get the context of it. Um, that is the extent of of the context surrounding this was that the the friend uh, with the nickname Uncut posted this this picture of his friend who was 16 years old uh, was posting. It sounds like, and I could be wrong from what I read though, that Caleb didn't know they were 16 when they first made or 15, excuse me, when they first made the joke. And then they double down on the joke. Like also could not be a joke. Maybe Caleb literally is admitting he wants to fuck 16 year olds or something. I don't know. Again, it's the age of consent of the state. Uh, concerning. I, it's not a smoking gun though. Uh, him as, as a part of um, posting, he, he posted the photo to congratulate him uh, and, and to express gratitude for him. Um, and, uh, okay. and, and that's, I mean, that's it. That's the context. And then Caleb saw why was sending something to the pick. Yeah. That's the question. I guess the, the, his answer is the reason they sent the, the pick is to congratulate him. Was the guy in the group Dex, chat though? As to was the guy in the group chat? Why would he send him that? Like, why would he put the guy's face in there? I'm just curious. Like some of it just was weird to me. Like, I don't really get the, um, I don't really get the context of it. <clears throat> I don't get it. Okay, so they're in a they're in a voice chat. Super Ho just joined the video chat. Uh, fuck at Caleb Heron, what are you doing? Caleb, me, or uncut says. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Super Ho Dilio, fuck. Uh, has sex all the time at Caleb Hammer. What are you doing? Uncut, Caleb, mute your <laughs> chat. It's too loud. Has sex all the time. What's the hip beat you got playing? Super Ho Dilio, smoking is gross. I don't know what that means. This is a very professional chat, by the way. Answer with gay fire. Oh, damn. Super ho diddly ho. 16. Uh, so is saying that 15-year-old boys are hot. What's What happened before this? What's the context of this? Doesn't make your case any better. What's the context? And who's uncut? Is uncut the guy? Um, this is so... This is a, I, can, can we see more? Can we see more pretext? Can we see other examples of what these people talked about in their chat? Like, I, honest, I honestly, I'd want to see what they were saying the entire time. What's, like, the tone of the overall chat? There's so much information here that's, like, missing. Um... Why, Caleb Hammer, why screenshot? <laughs> That's definitely weird. He is he hot? Is gay? Uh, shame. I, I I don't know. I want to read more of the group chat. So weird. His story on Snapchat and and took that screenshot, and it was at that point that uh, uncut. Oh, he put it on his Snapchat. Okay, sorry. I gotta listen more. Let me just start. Sorry. And, uh, and, and that's, I mean, that's it. That's the context. And then Caleb saw his story on Snapchat and, okay. and took that screenshot. And it was at that point that uh, Uncut questioned it. And, and the rest of it takes place here in this group chat. There's there's no other context out of which it could have been taken. Okay. Now, I do have to say, since Caleb has threatened to sue me, that 16-year-olds are actually at the legal age of consent in some states, including Caleb's home state of Michigan. So maybe he doesn't think anything is wrong with saying a 16-year-old boy is hot. Maybe. That could be it. Okay. Who is this 16-year-old boy to this other guy? Okay, whatever. I don't know. Despite that, it seems a lot of people, myself included, think that it's inappropriate for a then 23-year-old Caleb to say things like that. Sure. It made members I of the group uncomfortable, agree. and just last year, the influencer known as Just Pearly Things made a similar tweet saying 16-year-olds are hotter than 26-year-olds. Whoa, we're getting super based. Uh, I'd still need to see more of that group chat, because uh, I don't know, it's, especially since the claim is that it's super professional, even though everybody's name is something sexual. For a brief moment in time, both people on the left and right came together and made that pe that that seem it seems like that's a uh, I don't know I don't know what it, what's going on. It's very clear they felt that was an inappropriate comment, for sure. which eventually led to that influencer removing that tweet. 
There have been a number of Caleb supporters sure. who have been defending him this entire time, and I would love to hear in the comments below if the Caleb fans are supporters of grown men saying 16-year-old boys are hot, or no. if you think adults shouldn't be commenting on the hotness of kids. Of course Now, not. that wasn't the only time Super Ho made comments about teenage boys. In another post, it made it clear that Super Ho has okay. no qualms about his desire for those young teenage boys. Oh, geez. Let's see what we got here. So in these chat messages, Super Ho posted a picture of another member's Instagram page that shows a young boy, and he asks who the guy's name is, and the other guy gives him his name, which I blocked out, and... Okay. Then Uncut says Caleb's boy crush and Super Ho. Are they in a voice chat? Okay. Is, and the other guy gives him his name, which I blocked out. And then Uncut says Caleb's boy crush and Super Ho responds with, I would like to personally stick my penis in a hole of his. Your third pick is just one person out at a table. Person at a table? Okay. Caleb's boy crush. I would personally stick my penis in this. Uh, any hole will do. Oh, gross. Hot. Let me... How old... Uh, Any hole will do. Thank does he you. know he's a kid? Uncut responds with gross, and Superho responds with hot. Let me. Uncut responds with dude, he's like 14. Superho responds with nah, probably around the other MCI member's age, if they were if they were there with him. Later, Super... I mean, that's a reasonable thought, I guess. This is weird. Obviously, this is all very weird. Thank you so much for the medium gut, uh, G Jenny... Gian P? Did I say that right? Jenny P? Dude, he's like 14. Nah, probably around Blank's age if they were there with him. Is the other person he's referring to older? How old's the person he's referring to if he thinks that this if that the person's older? Just follow him on Insta. Uh, I'll be back home soon to chat. With Nah, probably around the other MCI member's age if they were if they were there with him. Later, Superho says, and if fuck, 17, it's legal there. It is here. Uncut responds with, Caleb, you're 23. That's gross. Superho says, not really. When I'm 50 and I find a sexy 21-year-old, I could be a sugar daddy. I will do it. Or her sugar daddy. There's definitely weird comments. Okay, so apparently the person was 17. And if fuck 17, it is... This is definitely concerning shit from Caleb. Caleb's definitely a fucking like, weirdo. For sure. Has sex all the time. Responds with a uh, confused or upset meme. And then Superho says, both of my grandparents' sets are 10 years apart. Six years is nothing. I would shove that cock right down his throat where it belongs. Oh my god. Uncut responds with, it's something if they're underage. Superho says, anything under 16 is. Believe it or not, 17 is not under 16. All right, so it sounds like uh, at this time, Caleb's moral prescription is that as long as they're 16, that's the free game. And in this state, that is true. So I guess I'll give him a little leniency on that, but it is still very concerning. Um, it sounds like the kid is 17, not 14. Thank you for the $2, Max I. Thoughts on Sam Silic? Very based, brother. Very based. Has sex all the time, responds with another meme. Uncut then says, still not an adult. Superho says, I fucked too many people when I was not an adult. Uncut says, just trying to save you from trouble. Superho says, if something is not against the law, there would be no trouble. Uncut responds. I guess that's a, <laughs> I guess that's a response. Uh, okay. With, I mean, you do you and do those boys. And Superho responds with, I do. I mean, it sounds like, <laughs> okay. I mean, you do you and do those boys. Sounds like he's making a little bit of a sexual joke too. Okay. Uh, all right. Incredible. Definitely weird. I don't. <laughs> okay. As you can see from those texts, the other members of the group clearly did not agree with Superhose openly sharing his desire for teenage boys. Yeah, that sounds true. Now, to make it clear, I don't care what Caleb Hammer's orientation is. Many members of the MCI group, including the informant who gave me these texts, identify as members of the LGBTQ community. The issue. Oh, what a fucking shocker, guys. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's, it sounds like the, the, the person was 17, not 14. So implying that they were 14 is a little bit disingenuous. Is that not what he said before? That the other one was like this young kid? It was a 17-year-old. Um, okay. The issue here, if this really is Caleb, is his alleged interest in young teenage boys and his continued attempt to openly express this in the MCI group chat that was not intended to host this type of conversation. Again, I disagree with that. Everybody's name is a sex position or whatever. I, I don't, I'm pretty sure that that group chat was sexual in nature or it was just a bunch of boys fucking around and being stupid. There's no way that was a professional group chat in any capacity. The informant who gave me these texts told me this type of continued behavior made himself and others very uncomfortable. That's probably true, but this very clearly was not a professional group chat. On another occasion, Super Ho decided it would be a bright idea to post a screenshot of an adult video of two men having anal in the chat. This pissed off everyone in the group and okay. few of the younger members of the group were quickly removed from the chat before they saw the image so they wouldn't have to be subjected to it. So in these chats right here, you can see 
how old were these younger members? Did they ever say at some point that they were like people under the age of 18 in this group chat? Or are you just saying younger members is like a general prescription? Like they were younger, like one was 20 because Caleb was 23. Just curious. Several members are talking about different. I just want to read this on the image so they wouldn't have to be subjected to it. So I thought you said pubes. I couldn't agree more. What? Why no? Please, maybe. PB is my cat's name. I do call him penis. Pubes, pubis, pube, and pwab. Penis, LMAO. What the fuck are they talking about? These. So in these chats right here, you can see several members are talking about different. Penis, LMAO. Uh, sedated pube sounds like something Monty Python would sell. What the hell, Albatross? Sedated pube sounds like a very edgy, contemporary, classical piece name. Um, these are all different people in the chat saying this. Uncut sounds like a high school garage band name. Has sex all the time sounds like my nightmares. Peen. Penis, ha ha ha. I mean, pube. It's this is definitely a very professional group chat where all of them are are being very professional. Uh, <laughs> adult stars that they like. Super Ho talks about how. Okay, hold on. Say again. So in these chats right here, you can see several members are talking about different adult stars that they like. And again, this is the very professional group chat, right? Super Ho talks about how Kyler Moss used to. Be uh, my favorite porn star. I wish he didn't stop. He stopped a few years back. Now my favorite is Joey Mills. This guy's Caleb. You're definitely gay. Uh, go to guys in sweatpants. They got some hot stuff on there. Joey Mills is a huge, such a twink bottom. Who can really take a co swallow cock, but his dick is huge. Fuck. I mean, the one thing that you can extrapolate from this so far that is negative for Caleb, well, other than saying 16 and 17 year olds are attractive, but again, the age of consent is state, like, says that's okay, even though I'm uncomfortable with it, is that he told Zeke that he's only like 10% gay. So if you really wanted to pick on that, you could say, why, you could ask the question, it's a very reasonable question, why did he lie about how gay he was? Um, not Joey, who's Joey Mills? I'm not even going to look it up. I'm not even going to do that. Because this seems like he's very explicitly attract, or, <sighs> actually, okay. I'm just, uh, okay. Okay. It's possible Caleb's not gay, and he said a bunch of gay jokes because he's not gay and doesn't care. That's actually also possible. It's possible that he's totally gay and that he's lying about it. It's also possible he's not gay at all, and this is him just making jokes because he's not attracted to boys, so it doesn't matter if he says gay shit about boys. Um, it says 18 plus in the group chat. Oh, does it? Okay, well, then it doesn't matter. If there are people under the age of 18, well, it does matter, but like if it's, it's supposed to be an 18 plus group chat, I wonder how other people got in there. Um, I don't know though. This seems like you're gay, Caleb, to be honest with you. I don't know, brother, but you know, there's so many, or he's bisexual. True. But bisexual isn't 10% gay. He's, um, it's more than 10% gay. Where does it say that this is an 18 plus group chat? Like how, what did somebody say this or what's, is there a name of a group chat? What's the name of the group chat? Did we ever get that? I mean, you can nickname the group chat, right? So what the fuck's the name of the group chat? Is it Super Professional MCI Group Chat? Or is it Incredibly Gay Cocksucking Wiener Dick Group Chat? I feel like those are two very interesting questions. Um, okay. To be his favorite adult star, I wish he didn't stop. He stopped a few years back. Now my favorite is Joey Mills. So these texts go on for a while and tell... Okay, in the very professional group chat. I'm going to read them all because we I have wish to. He didn't stop. He stopped a few years back. Now my favorite is Joey Mills. So these texts... Fuck, Blake Mitchell is perfect. No, unless he's sticking it in Joey. Uh, glasses... This guy's totally gay. Hell no, LOL. Glasses, muscular nerd. Oof, twinks are my life force. I just want somebody to look at me like this, LOL. Let's go on for a while until... Uh, uh, sorry, love. Simon is my ish. He looks like he's asking, are you fucking... Tarded? Wow. Blake is not a twink. Joey's a twink. Blake is a jock. Fuck off. I can dream, can't I? LOL. Blake is a jock. This is like the gayest group chat I've ever seen. So it's possible that they're straight, by the way, because I that's what I would say in, in a straight group chat. It's incredibly gay shit. That's what men do. But this is incredibly gay that they know the names of these porn stars. Um, I don't even feel like looking them up. I fucked with jocks and twinks. Blink gave a cash flashback to when he first joined. Here is Blink now. Cut eventually says, it's um, all fun and gay. Dude, I've got to read all these. I don't know. Okay. That's it. Has sex all the time. Completely censored. Fuck, I should be studying. Haha. -ha. Uh, your muscular have a tronomy exam tomorrow, but this is too funny. Psht, why does Blank like Twinks if Blank is a bottom boy? Where did I say Blake was a Twink? Twink? Games until. Context. I just made a separate statement saying that Twinks are my life force. I love how this chat got gay as fuck. This chat has been always been super gay as fuck. True. 
and it's fucking lit. Just to be clear, again, from what I remember, and you, uh, you criticize me for that, all the fats in my fucking head. You said that this was a super, uh, a super professional group chat, and these guys are saying the gayest shit from the start. What are you talking about? Blank. Just curious, but did you guys uh, like love Simon? I love it so much. I own it. It's all funny games. So Caleb posts a picture of Joey Mills getting fucked. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like Caleb's a degenerate, but. El Caleb posted a picture of Joey Mills getting effed. And then a few minutes later, uh, Super Ho actually posts an uncensored picture of Joey Mills. I feel like Caleb would do that at some point. Haha, ha, I would. I would. And then he sends it. Okay, so they're kind of goading him into showing that. Um. Okay. Haha, ha, changed it on you. It's Joey Mills topping. Goddamn, why did I delete this shit? Inappropriate. There are some things you just don't send in the chat. Puss. Okay. And another guy, to which he responds, okay. Haha, changed it on you. It's Joey Mills topping. And then you can see pretty much everyone in the group is extremely ticked off that he decided to post this because it was clearly just a, a joke and then he decided... It would be hilarious to post. They were sitting there talking about how much they like to fuck or how much they like gay twinks and jocks. I don't know if everything was just a joke. They're probably joking around, but <laughs> okay. I mean, he went too far. He went too far with the pictures for sure. But it, but the tone of the conversation doesn't exactly <laughs> communicate that this is too over the line. I don't know. This is a bunch of guys being gay. Puss, no nude pics. Blank, make a new chat before the others see it. Blank, too late. Blank and the others haven't seen it. Quickly, yeah, delete that chat. I'll remove them. Okay. Uncensored adult content in this chat. And you can see gotcha. several people asking him to remove it. Put them back. I delete the picture. Still there, my dude. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so this dancing gay with fire, he's the admin of the group chat. Still there, my dude, you deleted your copy. Fuck, actually, it's gone on my end. I don't see it. It's still on my end. Caleb Hammer, why? Uncut name to the chat, group chat. LGBT composers chat 18 plus. <laughs> All right, LMAO. And they removed other people in the group. Caleb ghosted us. Group so they wouldn't be subjected. It sounds like they changed it to 18 plus after the fact. Actually seeing this okay. image. And Caleb okay, ghosted, ha, ha, ha. Um, he added somebody to the group chat. It should be gone. Refresh blank. Did I see blank? It was just a penis inserting into a butthole. You. What the fuck? Well, doesn't really seem, or super ho, doesn't really seem like it's a... Yeah, it says LGBTQ Composure 18+, plus, but it looked like they named that after the fact that it was 18+, plus because he sent the nude picture. Um, somebody said, this brother is literally gay chicken in the group chat figured out what the vibe was giving. Yeah, it's possible. Um... Okay. Big deal to him. Now, aside from Super Ho's... Uh, did you see Blink? It was just a penis in turn, but okay. ...love teenage boys and post Super Ho doesn't really seem like it's a big deal to him. Now, aside from Super Ho's love of teenage boys and yes. posting inappropriate, unwanted adult content, he also dabbled in the... Well, let's just be clear that it, the, it, the people... Again, I think it's inappropriate, but the people were over the age of consent in his state. Um... And they were all making incredibly gay jokes from the start. The occasional slurs from time to time. On one occasion, he decided to rename everyone in the group to... He also dabbled in the occasional slurs from time to time. Okay. On one occasion, he decided to rename everyone in the group to R-word, including... Uh, listen, I you guys know that I really don't like the R-slur. Um, yeah, everything says the R slur. I actually don't like it a lot. I'm probably one of like... in the, in the the With the type of content that I make in the sphere that I am, I'm probably the most like... Uh, active against using that word because like my wife's a behavioral specialist she works with adults with intellectual developmental disabilities i know it's a meme that i say that but it's just the context for it okay so i understand that okay but i don't care in a private group chat at all okay i don't really care what you're saying to each other i don't really care what fucking boys listen this was what six six years ago bro <laughs> if you guys could see my fucking league of legends chat terrible okay horrific shit that i would say not proud of it i don't really care about I don't care. Um, Nices. Hi, has the names gone full R in this chat? They haven't gotten back with me yet. Caleb set his own nickname to R1. Super Ho set the nickname for blank to R2. Okay, that's... How come it says Caleb sets his one different... This is so weird to me. Who's... Wait. I, I'm a little confused. This is a question I have. This one says Caleb set his own name to R1. Super Ho Diddly Ho sent the nickname for Blank to R2. Didn't he just nickname himself R1, though? 
So if Caleb is our like our slur one, how come his still says super ho diddly ho set the nickname for somebody else to R two? Wouldn't that say that our slur one would have set this to R slur two? Is Caleb actually super ho diddly ho? I guess maybe he is. This person says Caleb boy stop, and then he says what himself, and then to add what what what? I'm just confused. Maybe it's something that takes a while for them to. I, again, maybe Add a cherry on. Maybe it's something that takes a while to like upload. Let me close this down. And it says that Super Ho Diddly Ho still has his nickname, even though he set supposedly set his name to. That seems weird to me. This is a little silly. When you change a nickname, it still uses your hard name. But that doesn't make sense to me. I could be wrong, but this one says Caleb said his own nickname to the Arsler one. And then it says Super Ho Diddly Ho, which I'm assuming was supposed to be Caleb, said somebody else to Arsler too. So I'm a little confused about that, but I guess maybe that is Caleb. Maybe it's a bug. Um, but you'd think that if this was Caleb, that it, wouldn't it say Ars, Arsler one said that whatever. Okay. It does. It does make it. It does make it seem like Caleb isn't super ho diddly ho. Um, but I could be wrong. Which are slurs? One of them name also Mexican. Okay, <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, this whole situation is. Dumb. I don't care about the slurs. Top decided to rename R Word Five to R Word Five Mexican. When I spoke to the informant about these texts, Based. he made it clear that he was he Mexican. Like felt Caleb seemed to men are always very racist to each other so I don't care like I don't know I make racist jokes with my friends too like especially my Italian friends it's, we say pretty horrible shit be a very callous and disrespectful individual and he seemed to take pleasure in making other members of the group uncomfortable I don't know man those okay. texts you saw were from 2018 but when Caleb allegedly rejoined the group just a couple of years ago the informant claimed his behavior hadn't changed at all uh, okay. those interactions that I had with Caleb were, were my earlier interactions with him back in 2018 okay. um, throughout the extent of time that we were in those series of sort of uh, friendly but professionally minded uh, group chats um... <laughs> that's not a friend <laughs> That wasn't a friendly but professionally money group chat. It looked like everybody was going was was in on the the the, the banter around talking about like sex and porn stars. This wasn't a professionally minded anything. Get the fuck out of here. This was a bunch of like this was a bunch of like young men being absolutely stupid and making a bunch of dumb inappropriate jokes. <clears throat> Caleb was uh, consistently a a source of argument of okay. um, of disrespect of flippancy. Um, and was uh, always um, was always acting um, with in, in just in, in in what I found to be a very uh, callous manner. Okay. Uh, become very noticeable to me that Caleb was um, was very consistent about making things uncomfortable uh, and uh, okay. expressed that he took pleasure in in sort of initiating those uncomfortable situations. Um, there was a period of a, a few years in which I did not speak to him and which in which he was not part of those. Uh, um, group chats. He returned to our primary composer group chat in, um, I believe it was 2023. Um, and it was as if nothing had changed uh, at that time. So um, he continued to make sexual references when they were completely unprompted or unwarranted. He, uh, I mean, from what you showed us, everybody was going back and forth with it. So like, I don't really care uh, would initiate <clears throat> arguments he would not accept differing opinions uh he would he okay. would repeatedly insist on arguing his point um no matter how much anybody else would try to resolve an argument by agreeing to disagree okay um and so just from from the first time i've known him throughout many many years he has always been uh somebody who <laughs> Let's see the group chat when he wasn't there for sure. Let me look at. I want to look through the entire group chat log. I want to be able to log into this guy's account and read it, what he was saying and what everybody else was saying because the the story doesn't match the 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 screenshots don't match the narrative. To be honest with you, is uh, show me show me the twenty twenty three group chats uh twenty twenty four group chat screenshots. Let me see what you guys are saying now. Which one are you? Are you uncut or are you super gay fire dance man? Is is interested in generating conflict yeah he wants to be anonymous because he's one of those inappropriate people <laughs> he's probably like uncut sitting there saying like the same shit you know 
uh, is interested in um, making people uncomfortable and who okay. is, uh, who is, I, I think I get the impression and have the opinion that, uh, that he is, um, a, a narcissistic individual who, um, who okay. thrives off of the wow. negative emotions he elicits in others. Wow. That's crazy, man. What a prescription. Okay. Uh, so just to follow up, um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen his YouTube channel. So you feel that that kind of narcissistic personality that's kind of portrayed on his YouTube channel is, is somewhat true to his actual real personality. I would say it's incredibly true to his real personality. Knowing Okay. Thank you so much, Carmine. Crichello. Tell me if I've said that wrong. I'm so sorry. For the $10, I figured it out. They are all Camden Gerard Davis. He has duplicated and infiltrated the YouTube finance space. No one is safe. I agree. Blame it on a black guy. You racist. <laughs> what we know now, Super Ho clearly is attracted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original. Listen, man, no offense, but you are totally like you are a totally drama guy. You know, I have no, this is the problem. OK, here's the thing. I love fucking drama. I love like pig pending it. I love being a fucking gooner. I love being ridiculous. But when it comes to like a very serious accusation, which this video is about, I usually will shut that off. And I think that I, for the most part, done that here. Right. You're a very serious accusation, basically, um, that Caleb has sexually. Uh, well, I guess I guess the legal definition of sexual assault because unwanted sexual touching from Caleb to Zeke. Um, and that Caleb was leveraging his power as a large content creator to try to co coerce people into doing OnlyFans. These are your claims. So when we have that conversation, we can no longer be silly, fun, drama people. Saying that he, like, saying this. Knowing what we know now, Super Ho clearly is attracted by young teenage boys. He's attracted by young teenage boys. That's just not proper context for the, the severity of your claims. You're talking about how Caleb, to some extent, is a predator. What we saw is him making a bunch of sexual jokes. I don't know to what extent because these screens, we're not seeing everything. I would need to scroll through the chat log for multiple messages before. I would need to scroll through everything. I want to see what they were saying when Caleb wasn't in the chat, but it looked like everybody was having like going back and forth being like sexually inappropriate uh, or making like sexual jokes and whatnot. So in that group chat, he said some weird shit about 16, 17 year olds, which are legal in a state. Do I like that? Of course not. I don't like that. I think it's, it's very, I just think it's very inappropriate. You know, even as a 23 year old, but that brings a whole conversation about like the environmental process of being like educated to think 16 year olds are fair game. It's wrong. But like, so when you, when you throw, oh, he likes young teenage boys. No, he doesn't. He likes what he, what is considered legal teenaged boys. Yes. It's gross. Well, I wouldn't say, yeah, I think it's gross, but it's legal. And like you, so you keep sitting here and saying that it's, it displays a narrative. And part of me feels like Scott. Um, who I don't think is a bad guy. Part of me feels like he feels smited by Caleb not giving him more information about the story. And so from the start, we've had like, this comes off to some extent a little bit disingenuous. The whole first half of this video was a huge nothing burger about how Zeke, somebody who was open to doing OnlyFans and was trying to push his own OnlyFans, was asked if he wanted to do a gay shoot, said, I'm not super into it, but I can be convinced, but it's very unlikely I can be convinced, but I still can be convinced. And then Caleb tried to hook him up with that. It's a big nothing. The second half, a lot of inappropriate conversation, seemingly a lot of it jokes. I don't know where, what starts and ends because you're not showing us everything from i need to see messages from before leading up to and then after i personally feel like i need to scroll through it myself i need to know who this person is is they, are they uncut are they super gay dancing with fire the narrative that this is supposed to be a super professional group chat is fucking ridiculous to me obviously not a professional group chat in any capacity it's a bunch of it's a bunch of young men sitting in a group chat making gay jokes um they might all be gay. They might all just be joking about liking gay shit. I don't know. It's like, it's a lot. Um, there's so much here, but for such a big claim of severity, like I don't, I, you can't, you, you know, you have to be matter of fact about this. There needs to be a lot more. There needs to be tons of context. We're talking about labeling somebody a sexual predator who leverages their platform to sexually abuse people. That's what your claim is in this video. Uh, at least that's the implication. You know, maybe I'm wrong in my ability to read that, but the implication is that Caleb is a sexual predator. Like this is what this video communicates to me. You're, and I, I could be wrong in my interpretation, but it, it's a, the implication is that this video is about, like I said before, seemingly Caleb le leveraging his position of power as a large YouTuber to try to coerce people into doing OnlyFans and then cornering them and locking them in a room and forcing them uh, to stay there while he touches them or else they can't leave the room. So I need 
everything everything needs to be super specific and the narrative of this video i'm just it's 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 rough you know and this is a very complicated topic when we get into the conversations about you know uh, sexual assault and coercion and all these other things but like so far this video shows me that there are some inappropriate group chat messages which i need more context for that definitely do make me see um Caleb in a more negative light but not enough to even get close to calling him a sexual predator which is a big claim you know and I was pretty active in canceling sexual predators on TikTok when I was big on there I got two canceled you know there was there was one guy who uh you know a drunk a, dr a TikToker came forward and talked about when they were drunk uh he assaulted them he got kicked out of school for sexual battery um like when he came back to TikTok after his cancellation was over he tried to talk to a 14 year old that's 21 um, insane. Another guy sending sex BDSM sex tests out to people that were in a group chat with him as young as 13 or 14, sending his penis to them, trying to get 17 year old boys to meet up literally on their birthday in secluded Airbnbs together. Um, we're talking about like, that's the shit that I'm used to talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And so this is like, I'm, there's not enough here. It's like, like I, you should understand, like when you call somebody like a pedophile or a predator, and he didn't call him anybody a pedophile, but or a predator, like you're using incredibly intense terms. Like this is this is a real thing, and we're 28 minutes out of 32 in, and so far I've seen some questionable group texts with a narrative that it's a professional group chat when there very clearly is not. So like I, this needs to be there's there's it's a this is a rough video for me. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events. How, what do you... <sighs> I just, it's hard to respect Scott at this point. I'm so sorry, but my understanding is that Zeke is, eight, is 19 years old at this point, or 18. Um... <sighs> am, I, am I wrong? Am I, am I, is Zeke 17? Um, this is fucking crazy, bro. I have to verify this. This is responds no with, so is saying that 50 <sighs> and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. Zeke was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also where well, your, your implication says that Caleb was 17 or under. But he's, but from what I can put together, if Caleb had, uh, excuse me, you're saying that Zeke was 17 or under. That's the implication here. This is a huge problem. This is bad. This is where this thing gets really bad. This is actually like the worst, unless I'm wrong. If he's, if, if, if Zeke is 17, well, if Zeke is 17 and Caleb's asking him to do OnlyFans, like that's a problem. Um, this is bad. This is, this is not good. What was the first video? Is, is, is Zeke's first video still up? I need to go. I need to watch like the first few seconds of it. <sighs> Jesus fucking This is insane. Our I, this is insane. Okay, this is, um, this is the first video, right? Is this the first video that he was on? Stefan Kiroga, uh, Stefan Z Kiroga, uh, I'm 19, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Our second follow-up episode. This yeah. is okay, this is a second follow-up episode. Today will be... Who the fuck is Sev? Um, sorry. Um, turn. Give this video a like, so today we'll be meeting with Z. At the age of 19, he dropped out of school and quit his job because he, quote, doesn't want to work. His mom okay, when he says second follow-up video, I'm going to assume. Uh, I'm Esteban Quiroga, Esteban uh, Z Quiroga, uh, I'm 19, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Our second follow-up episode, this yeah. is yeah. pretty exciting. When he says second follow-up, I'm assuming that he did another follow-up with somebody else, and he's saying this is the second follow-up episode I've done. Um, Steve's original episode. This is the first time that he's on. Today we'll be meeting with Zeke. At the age of 19, he dropped out of school and quit his job because he, quote, doesn't want to work. His mom supports his lazy lifestyle while he just makes excuses at every turn. Give the Acted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. 
what the fuck are you trying to say here? The oh, this is ha, <laughs> this is so fucking scummy. This guy. While Zeke's actions have made him unbelievable. This is so fucking scummy. Holy fuck. Holy fuck, Scott's a scumbag. Holy fuck, dude. Listen to this again. Super Ho clearly is attracted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat message. Original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and... Dude, this is fucking scumbag shit. This guy, this guy's a fucking scumbag. Holy fuck. Okay, I want to be very clear about what's being said versus the implication of what he's saying. This is so scummy. Holy fuck, this guy. Scum fucking piece of shit. Listen to this again. Detracted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events. The alleged events, I'm assuming, can be interpreted as one of two ways. The alleged events of issue of what's going on on the left, Zeke would have been underage. That's the... That's one interpretation. The other interpretation is when Zeke started interacting with Caleb. He was 19. So what I'm hearing here is that Scott is trying to use manipulative language that he can fall back on and say, well, at the time of the events on the left, which have nothing to do with Zeke on the right, Zeke was under the age of 18. However, it comes off the implication is that Zeke was, was like under the age of 18 when he first started interacting with Caleb. This is fucking crazy, dude. You're, you, this isn't fucking, this is insane. Are you saying that this kid is Zeke? Is that what you're trying to say? Really is I would say it's incredibly true to his real personality. Knowing what we know now, Super Ho clearly is attracted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events. Is attracted I'm sorry, by give young me a teenage minute. boys. Caleb's original accuser Zeke was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. While Zeke's actions have made him unbelievable to many people. What does that fucking mean? People, I'm curious if this changes your opinion on if Zeke is telling the truth about his alleged encounter with Caleb Hammer. Now, before I. What the fuck does that have to do with. What is Zeke's age at the time when Caleb didn't know Zeke back in the group chat in 2018 have to do with Zeke's age when he first started making content with Caleb at 19. Dude, this is wild. This guy is fucking insane. Holy fuck, dude. This is insane. Dude, this is rough. This is bad. Wow, what the fuck was that, dude? It sounds like what he's trying to communicate to his audience is that Zeke was under the age of 18 when Caleb first started having him on the show. Um, and using like language that like, oh, I have plausible deniability language of saying like, oh no, I meant uh, Zeke was that old. I was under the age of 18 when this totally irrelevant event happened. He's, he's saying that Zeke was a teenager when the alleged misplacement happened, but that's just not true. I mean, like he wasn't, he wasn't a minor. It just doesn't matter. That's what, dude, this is crazy. He's using the idea that he's still a teenager technically as like a fucking, as a fucking dog whistle. Young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. Are you trying to it's insinuate it's the same person? Dude, what is wrong with you? Oh my fucking God, dude. Dude, this is fucking crazy. I, I would love to see the legal analysis of what's being said here and what the implications are and what any reasonable person would like take out of that versus what Scott claims to trying to be said because or claims that is trying to be said because this is fucking this is fucking dirty. While Zeke's actions have made him unbelievable to many people, I'm curious if this changes your opinion on if Zeke is telling the truth about his alleged encounter with Caleb Hammer. Now no, it doesn't at all. It doesn't at all. You're gross, Scott. Fuck you, bro. Before I end the video, I want to talk about one more thing. Caleb's content, in my opinion, has devolved from actually trying to help people financially to nothing more than trying to mock people for their terrible financial habits. So just to be clear, you're saying, if you're saying it devolved from helping people to just mocking people, what you're saying at the time that he was making content with Zeke, that it was actually well-intentioned and he was trying to help Zeke. Just to be clear, because when you say devolved, you're saying that like originally it was good and now it's shit. Just to be clear, you're saying that the original videos were good when it came to Zeke. He brings people on, yells at them, tells them they're stupid for buying Starbucks coffee, and even goes so far as to openly insult them in the titles and thumbnails. Okay. To make and they all still come on because they, they know what's going on, right? Like if I was like, oh, maybe I'll be on Caleb Hammer, and I looked and I'd be like, oh, he's kind of insulting in thumbnails. What should I do? I would just not go on.
make them seem as pathetic as possible. In a recent video, he even decided to make the Asian guy in the thumbnail look as inappropriate as possible, all in the hopes of getting as many views as he can to I don't care. rack up that ad revenue. This thumbnail apparently went too far, and his own audience called him out in the YouTube comments and on his own subreddit, to which Caleb then decided to take a break from Reddit and pinned a comment on a few weeks ago, I ended a two-month break from Reddit. I failed a couple of times, and I'm going to attempt a three-month break this time. Constructive feedback is great, but we literally cannot post a video on here without it only being complaints. It's well known the karma system encourages negativity, so I understand it, and I'm not upset at this. Um, but it's no good for my mental health. The comments on here are complete 180 from what we see on the main platform and other socials. So I'm going to stay engaged. There are a majority of an audience is. I do love you all. I know that you only want the best for the channel. I just doing this for mental health. I don't care. On the YouTube video, trying to push back against the well-deserved backlash for portraying. Okay, can you show us where he didn't pay Zeke or whatever? Like that that's the claim. What do we have here? Trying an Asian man in such uh before people come in here uh who are only offended on other people's behalf who aren't even offended in the first place we worked with the comedian hans kim on the title and thumbnail and everyone found it hilarious so calm down also join thousands of people i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck about the the, the that in an appropriate way fun fact this is Brittany simon what's going on Brittany? how are you doing fun fact caleb and his guests pick the titles together and come up with fun ways to click baity according to a podcast i, I watched that it was on okay interesting so okay now, Caleb has claimed on many occasions that guests on the show get a say on the thumbnail design okay. and titles of their videos, and that he would never create those over-the-top designs unless the guest was okay with it. Okay. But after speaking to a former guest of the show, Gia, she said something entirely different. Caleb put her in a jail outfit in the thumbnail, wrote scum on her chest, and titled the video that she deserves jail. Gia claims she never agreed to that and was very disappointed how she was portrayed on the episode, claiming the bad parts were hyped up, which led to Caleb's fans attempting to dox her and ruin her life. Okay. Like, we did the episode, they told me to hype up my bad parts, and so, like, to make me out to be, like, a bad guy, because that's, like, kind of his shtick. Okay. And so, that and video ended up being really, really, really bad, to the point where they were trying to dox me, they're trying to dox my husband, they're trying to dox my family. All right, so here you go, Caleb, here's my, uh, you know, make sure that to be, be more uh, more against your audience doing stuff like that. That's the general, that, that is the prescription I put onto Caleb. Try to control your audience better. Dude, this is so fucking... You got one... How many videos does Caleb do? Give me, like... I, I don't care. Dude, look at this. Look at all these videos. Okay, does every single one of them say they have the same story as her? Like... Dude, this is so fucking stupid. You... you uh, well, I don't... This is so dumb. You, you didn't expect him to say wild shit. This one's called dumbest, broke, rejected, error, 404. I'm losing brain cells. Broke mom is mad I won't date her, blah, blah. You know what you're getting into. I, this is stupid as fuck. This whole fucking thing is stupid. I don't give a shit. She was scummy. She abandoned her daughter. If that's the case, then like, oh, she go fuck herself. This is so fucking stupid, dude. <sighs> dude, what, what is this? What does Scott want to be as a content creator? But I wanted the money because I was going to buy a van with it, and then I did, and then I lost the van. You understand it was from school, right? Yeah. So invest in your education, you were going to use it to buy a van? Yes. And then what happened? Then I lost the van. I'm going My name is Gia. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Sacramento, California, and this is Financial Audit. 25? Yeah. Why? Do I look younger? No, it's not about looks. It's about what's in front of me and everything I've learned oh. about before. You're too young for this. <laughs> I am. Yeah. It You're... started when I was 20. I got into a hole. A hole's an understatement, my <laughs> dude. I'm sorry. Usually I have some pleasantries and everything, but it's just hearing your age right there really. Oh, okay, whatever. I just keep moving on. There was like people, the comments, people who watched the episode. Caleb himself. Yeah, people who I'm watched sorry, him. What? People yeah, she was bragging about getting him and not working uh, while her parents raised her kid. Or getting high. Oh, okay. If that's true. And I don't know because I haven't seen it myself. That's true. It's scummy behavior. People who watched the episode were trying to dox you. She lives out of a car. <laughs> I guess you can't dox her then. Huh? Just his audience. I guess you still can. But... And uh, one thing I want to answer, uh, ask you is about the, uh, the thumbnail of your video. It's you in a jumpsuit. And he, the title is You Should Be In Jail. And it has scum written on your chest. Did you approve that thumbnail? You did not approve. No. Because his... his you can't even get this girl to not eat on a fucking camera for, for like, a fucking... The full interview um, of, like, six minutes. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah, this, this is a person I trust. Say that he... All, the six-minute conversation, and she can't she can't just not fucking eat throughout it. Like, that's... What, and I'm not making a fat joke. What I'm saying is, like, this is wild. It's like... Uh, this, I mean, what is... what's What am I supposed to expect here? How credible... I'm not trying to be like... I know I'm nitpicking, but this whole video is a fucking hit piece against Caleb at this point. This whole thing is fucking bizarre, dude. The thumbnails are approved by the people who appear on the channel, and you say you did not approve that thumbnail. I mean, like, we took a bunch of pictures together. Or not together, but, like, they took a bunch of pictures after recording. 
but I didn't like get to see like their options for that thumbnail. I don't care. An I argument that has been around for a long time is whether influencers are responsible for their audience's behavior or not. There is a level of responsibility for their audience, I think, personally, that they should have. If their audience is very toxic, they should call that out actively. Um, if he doesn't do that, there's a criticism, but it's nowhere near a sexual predator, which is what this video is about. Some people say no, while others think they are. I land somewhere in the middle and believe that creator isn't responsible for every little action your audience does, but when you create an atmosphere of hate where you belittle every guest that comes on your show, treat them like they are idiots, and portray them as horrible people in the title and thumbnails, your audience will see that and think it's okay for them to also treat these people the way they see Caleb treat them. I heard from several guests on the show who have all been doxxed and harassed by Caleb's fan after appearing on the show, because Caleb creates, in my opinion, episodes of Jerry Springer that is disguised as financial content so he can get okay. higher ad rates and better sponsors. Okay. Ultimately, and they know okay listen doxing is bad if it's true you've said you've talked to a lot of guests um it sounds like if you've talked to multiple guests and you're only able to get one to come forward and say that they didn't get consent about the title or thumbnail it sounds like it's not a common thing that's basically what you're implying because you, you said you have on multiple guests um you talk or you've talked to multiple people right so you and you're only able to get one that said that was able to say like no 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 i didn't have any say in the thumbnail or whatever um, okay, what does this mean? Like, yeah, Caleb, call it out if it's actually happening, but like, what, what is this? Here, that is disguised as financial content so we can get higher ad rates and better sponsors. Ultimately, my personal opinion is that the show does very little to help anyone appears on it and is designed primarily to make Caleb and his team as rich as possible, all of the expense care. of shitting on every person who comes on the show looking for help. I don't care. I literally don't care. I don't give a shit about this. We're talking about, you're, you're claiming he's a fucking sexual predator. Why the fuck do I care if he has the Jerry Springer of financial audit content? Who gives a fuck? There's nothing to do with anything. Okay? If that's what he does, then these idiots should go watch an episode before they go on there. Look at the thumbnails and the titles. That's what they should do. Okay? You think I give a fuck about any of this? What does this have to do with you claiming that this guy's a fucking predator? Holy fuck. This is crazy, man. Dude, this is this guy is something else, man. After watching this, this is a this guy is something else. This guy is something, man. This is rough, bro. This is fucking rough. In the description of this video, you'll find my entire interviews with Zeke, Gia, and the MCI informants. I'm not interested in. I don't. Give those a watch and then make up your own mind about who you believe. Ultimately, I can't believe you. You're a very dishonest, disingenuous person. I just can't. Like you've sat, you've there. The only thing in here that makes me feel uncomfortable when it came to what Caleb did was that he was making sexual comments about 16 and 17 year olds that are legal in his state. I think it's inappropriate, but also it was in a group chat that you showed us. You cut it up and showed it to us. And so I don't know enough context and I can't trust you as a narrator. I can't. Your whole first half of your video was, was shaming Caleb because he asked Zeke if he wanted to do OnlyFans porn with a dude and Zeke was open to it. And like you're trying to make it seem like he did something inappropriate. You're, if this is either, this video is either dumb, you're, you as a person either fucking stupid or you're disingenuous. You're dumb or disingenuous. Either like you don't understand how to properly read what you're showing to us or you're doing it on purpose. There's no in between. This is insane. No reasonable person would have interpreted this first half the way that you interpreted it. And so you your your credibility is assassinated from the start. Um I it's concerning some of it, but like it's not enough. It's not. This is crazy, man. This is a disgusting hit piece in my opinion. I feel Caleb's channel is a net negative to the YouTube platform as a whole. Okay. But for those who disagree, I would love to hear your opinion as to why in the comments below. This was gross, man. This was fucking gross. <sighs> Jesus Christ. This, uh, okay. <sighs> All right, man. Listen, uh, let me just give you the little. Caleb Hammer, my let me give you the little end off here. This video is fucking dumb. That's it. Like I said, I'm concerned about the 16, 17 year old shit. Definitely concerning, but it's legal in a state. So I'm like not super inclined to think that Caleb's a predator. As to the allegations of OnlyFans pressuring, there was no pressure. He made it very comfortable for the people to serve. Or the one person you showed say no. I thought you were going to come forward with more people. You didn't. Um, to say no. Um, <clears throat> In the in the video, you even showed us screenshots that said that basically, um, you showed us screenshots that said that this guy was open to doing gay porn. That's what you showed us. I'm just letting you know. I've talked about this already like a hundred times. That's what you showed us. Um, and you still tried to push the narrative that it was some kind of force. 
this this you tried to insinuate that that really weird implication that like Caleb was talking to Zeke when he was under the age of eighteen. The most bizarre fucking thing that you've ever showed. It was insane. I can't believe you even showed us that and said what you said. Um, at that point, that's when you die. That's when your credibility died. That's when that's when it was no longer worth listening to you, talking to you. Um, this this is the most disgusting part of this video when you say this. It's you're like I, I mean, listen. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I hope that you're prepared to attract an audience of hypersensitive, pearl-clutching, virtue-signaling children with no understanding of the real-world dynamics, because that's what you're generating with this fucking dog shit video with absolutely no understanding of social situations or anything in w any capacity whatsoever. So, like, good luck to you for pulling in this audience of people that will consume you a year or two down the line. Something's going to happen to you that's going to be not that big of a deal or it's going to be something that doesn't paint you as the best person, but like it's not you being a horrible person. It's some mistake you made and you're going to get fucking dumpstered by this fucking audience that you are trying to generate. I'm letting you know. That's my advice. Um, this is this is a not good. And let me just, for the end of it, let me play the most disgusting part of this video. And I'm attracted by young teenage boys. It's incredibly true to his real personality. Knowing what we know now, Super Ho clearly is attracted by young teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. Disgusting behavior, bro. Disgusting. This is fucking, this is fucking nasty, dude. <sighs> okay. Cool video, bro.